Heisman to Heisman. This year, Spartan coach Nick Saban hopes to make it two in a row for the mighty Wolverines. Freshman sensation Cedric Irvin faces his toughest test. Lloyd Carr's defense is as strong as iron. And the standings reveal that the Spartans of Michigan State have suddenly got it in overdrive. They're in four and one. They, too, are dreaming of Pasadena, just like Michigan. Let's go to John Saunders in New York. Alongside Todd Blackledge, we'll get you out to your game in just a moment. That's the first of a doubleheader. At 3.30 Eastern time, some of you will see Northwestern against Penn State. The saga continues. Well, it's an amazing story. This team has won 13 consecutive games in the Big Ten. In fact, to find the last conference game the Wildcats lost, you've got to go back to State College. Two years ago, 1994, the season finale, Penn State won 45 to 17 on their way to an undefeated season. Since that time, the Wildcats unbeaten in conference play. Still a shot to go to the second straight Rose Bowl. In the Pac-10, everyone's chasing Arizona State, so USC Washington, that much more important. It's a very important game for second place in the conference because it has Cotton Bowl implications. And Corey Dillon, tailback, is the Wally Pip of college football. He came in off the bench a couple weeks ago. He's run through every Pac-10 defense in his way. All right, those games coming up at 3.30 Eastern Time. One game already done today. They played this thing at 8 o'clock Eastern Time this morning over in Dublin, Ireland. And appropriately, appropriately enough, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame win for the 33rd consecutive time over Navy. Now's your chance to vote for your favorite undefeated team in the nation. It's the Burger King fan poll. Call 1-900-773-3000 to cast your vote for the top team in the nation from the AP poll. The cost is 50 cents per call. Lines are open until the end of the first half, so if they're busy, keep calling, and we'll show you the results during Valvoline Halftime 96. 1-900-773-3000. Do you like Michigan State's chances against Michigan? They've beaten them two out of the last three years. Yeah, well, Michigan is very solid, but Michigan State, number two in the Big Ten in total offense and total defense, and they've got a hot quarterback. That game and Nebraska-Oklahoma coming up after this message and a word from your ABC stations. and it's a classic Michigan State and Michigan from Ann Arbor the home of the Wolverines well folks the high temperature today 30 degrees but that will not slow up from both Michigan and Michigan State they were out here early today and it will continue long into the early evening this is for bragging rights to the state of Michigan Good afternoon and welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger with a Coach Dick Vermeer. Look at I got the longies out. I got the gloves. He's the coach. No hat, no gloves. Tough. But you were up at East Lansing, and you think you know why these Spartans are suddenly driving toward the top. Well, I think Nick Staben and his staff will do for Michigan State what Gary Barnett and his staff have done for Northwestern. Excellent coaches. First off, I say that because he's a fine leader. Great teachers on his coaching staff. Very, very demanding coaches. Great technicians. Uh, uh, they have NFL experience on both sides of the line of scrimmage, and they're fine motivators. Interesting matchup and contrast between the starting quarterbacks. On the left, Scott Dreisbach of Michigan, a winner. On the right, Todd Schultz. He's the hot hand in the Midwest, Dick. Well, I talked to Gary Trankel, Todd Schultz's quarterback coach, and he told me, number one, he has good arm strength. Number two, he makes good decisions. Number three, he, he moves around, has a good feel in the pocket, and he's very, very accurate. Not a great scrambler, but he's very accurate. Now, Dreisbach, he, he's a total package, in my opinion. He has no limitation. Strong arm. He can throw the difficult balls accurately. He's a fine runner. He has a 72-yard touchdown run. He's a total package. 
the Wolverines lost last year to Michigan State. One statistic to keep in mind about this team, the last seven times that Michigan has lost to Michigan State, they have won the following year, and they come in here favored by eight. You know, Dick, let's talk about these two defenses. Both of them are outstanding, but both of them a little different. Well, Michigan's defense last year was number one in the Big Ten. Right now, they're ranked number two, but they're a much better defense than they were last year. I compare them favorably with the top three or four defensive teams in the country. They can really play. Now, Michigan State's defense, believe me, Michigan State's defense is almost as good, not as, as you know, physical. And Irons is a little bit banged up today, maybe, Brent. He has a soft cast on the right ankle. He went into the Northwestern game with a turf toe, and the coaches believe in the pregame warm-ups he turned over the ankle favoring the turf toe. He did not work out that hard in the pregame warm-ups. It is something to watch here today. It will be a concern, but I'll tell you, Michigan State's defense is playing awfully well, and they're the most improved defensive team we've seen, and uh, it'll be a real battle, and Ike Reese is the guy that leads him. They're minus Reggie Garnett, their fine inside linebacker. He will play sparingly. The coaching matchup, both in their second years. Lloyd Carr on the left, Nick Saban on the right. Michigan, Michigan State coming up. Golf course here, not yet frozen, but Jack Aroot, this is football weather, big fella. Brent, it certainly is. We've got scattered snow flurries, but the temperature's going to stay right at about the mid-30s. Great weather. But, you know, one great thing about college football are rivalries. For 89 years, this rivalry has existed. And when you make it an interstate rivalry, it really gets heated. Consider Florida, Florida State. Think about Auburn, Alabama. And here in Michigan, it's Michigan, Michigan State. What's it all about? Well, how about bragging rights for a whole year? You can be the victim or the giver of jokes and jibes. But here at Michigan, Michigan, it goes one step further. In East Lansing, you can't play hail to the victors. But here in Michigan, all the way around the stadium are the 11 teams that make up the Big Ten. A little friendly rivalry? Take a look at Michigan State's banner. It's upside down. <laughs> We'll pay attention to this, our first statistic of the day. Michigan will tell you all about the coin toss. 6-0 oh when losing, and guess who lost? The Wolverines. Michigan State won the coin toss and elected to defer. So Tyrone Butterfield, number one, back there deep with number four, Russell Shaw, and Chris Gardner gets ready to kick it off in pregame warm-ups. This kick traveled to about the two-yard line. Exactly line. where Shaw fields it. Shaw down at the 21-yard line. That's where Scott Drysback will go to work. Let's meet the Chili's Grill and Bar starting lineup for the Michigan Wolverines. Drysback a winner. His only loss to Northwestern. Backs in receivers. Clarence Williams will start, but we also expect to see a lot of Chris Howard in the game. The offensive line is a good one, anchored by Rod Payne, number 52. John Jansen, 77, figures to be a great tackle someday. Here is the toss to Williams. Fumbles the ball out of bounds as he came across the 25, and it'll be spotted right there. The Michigan State front seven, and it features a big change in that Ike Reese is now the key man, but Dick Garland has to move into the middle spot, number 37. Well, he does have some playing experience, but he's not a Garnett. North Garnett was the leader and the real physical tackler. Sorry, Canoe heads up that secondary. Snow flurries follow falling here in Ann Arbor. Dreisbach changes up at the line. Two tight ends. Three-step drop. Fires his first pass he is complete to Ty Streets at the 29-yard line. The weather figures to be a factor. Not so much the flurries or the fact that it's only going to be 35 degrees, but that wind out of the southwest at 10 to 20 miles an hour is going to make it very difficult for the field goal kickers here in Ann Arbor. Third down and one for the Wolverines. And Howard checks in as the lone running back. Two tight ends and an H-back. Right side power. Power, first down. It's close. Tyrone Garland, number 37, 
making the hit, and they will move the chains now. Fresh set it down. Just a slow, mush play. They're going to get after people. Not good. Wing blocking there by number 88. Mark Campbell, I think, was the guy that was responsible for getting that first down. Good key block in there. The ball at the Michigan 33-yard line. Again, the Wolverines with two tight ends. Shaw comes in motion. It'll be Howard into the middle. Finds a huge hole where Garland would have been. Close to a 10-yard gain on first down. They ran the counter gap play to the left, pulled both the right guard, Adamy and Jansen, 77, the right tackle. You'll concentrate the right side. You'll see them pull. They get a nice kick out block. The big Jansen, 77, goes through the hole, gets a devastating block, and there's that opening for number eight, Howard, to advance the football. Butterfield brings the play in from the Michigan sideline on a first down. The ball at the Wolverine 43-yard line. And it is Howard this time wrapped up for perhaps a yard as Robert Newkirk, defensive tackle, a freshman, number 62, leads the charge for the Spartans. Well, Gary Moeller, you'll see. Excuse me, Gary Moeller. That's a, a good jump back there, isn't it, Brent? Huh? That's a good Lloyd guard. Lloyd Carr told us the number one thing they had to do to win this football game, really, was to do a great job in the kicking game. Do a great job in the kicking game and then make sure they defense Mason, the great kick returner. Second and nine, Wolverine still using two tight ends, running out of that formation. Williams is back on the field to the 45-yard line and no more. This will put the Wolverines in third and long as Courtney Ledger, 53, made the stop. One of the best things Michigan State defense has done all year is defense third down situations, only allowing 27% conversion. That's outstanding. That's outstanding. Don Pease and the staff doing a good job of scheming uh, their defensive scheme. They're not the most physical group, Brent, but they, they have very, very good speed, and they take advantage of it. And uh, Nick Saban, with his pro experience, I think has really helped them in their third down nickel coverage packages. Chris Floyd, the lone running back. He'll stay to protect. Tries back, needs it. Gets it off complete to the tight end. First down to the Spartans. 30-yard line, and Mark Campbell, who had not been featured as a receiver. They had been using number 80, Jeremy Tooman. So the Wolverines cross up the Spartans. They throw to Campbell for the first down and a 25-yard gain. He's coming from the left side of your screen, crossing underneath. They, they were in a man-to-man -man coverage. They crossed the two tight ends, and they picked the coverage that way, meaning they bumped the coverage man off. And here he is catching the football. As you said, Brent, he's not the tight end they like to throw the ball to, but that time it was critical. They, they got it to him for the first down. And Coach, he sits down on the right side. Again, two tight ends. That's Butterfield in motion, and they'll run Williams over to the left side. Looks for the corner to the 28-yard line before he is brought down. Number 10, Ray Hill coming up to help Garland defensively for the Spartans. Michigan has done such a good job on first down this year. A lot of yardage gained on that down, and that really makes it easier to call your second and third down situations when you're doing such a good job on first down. The muscle formation continues. Campbell and Tuman are the two tight ends. One running back. This time, the slot's to the right, and they put Williams in motion. They go empty. They're going to throw streaks down the right middle. Tuman touchdown. scoring strike to Tuman. So it's 25 yards to Campbell and then the touchdown to the other tight end. I believe that's the most impressive first drive of the ball game that Michigan has had all year. They have not been outstanding in the first quarter from an offensive standpoint. That was a very well executed drive. Credit Freddie Jackson and the offensive staff. Remy Hamilton makes it a 7 nothing game. So Jeremy Tooman with his fourth touchdown catch of the year. 
observed there's no running back in the backfield. He has gone in motion to the left. That widened the safety. There was two wide receivers to the right side of your screen. The, nobody picked up the tight end going down the seam. There he is for a touchdown. I believe Ike Reese, 44, the outside linebacker, is supposed to run with him in that situation. Jay Feely kicks it. Derek Mason, the lone deep man from the five-yard line for the Spartans. Slips the tackle to the 26-yard line. And now, let's meet the Chili's Michigan State lineup. Todd Schultz. Look at what he's done over the last three games. Four touchdowns and not a single interception. Dwayne Goldburn will start. And, of course, we will see the freshman sensation, Cedric Urban, number 33, with that line. The offensive line, Matt Beard anchors it. He's a good one. He's got good speed, number 52. He'll get out of there. They offset the fullback. Michigan State frequently runs behind him. Toss Goldburn. Looks for a seam. Runs to the 32-yard line where the ball will be spotted. On that scoring drive for the Wolverines, keep this in mind. They ran the ball six times, and they passed it three times including the touchdown pass. Now there's Jared Irons taking the defensive call from the sideline after being the first man to hit Goldberg. But it'll be second down and four for the Spartans. They use one tight end and they flex Kerr off the line and put him in motion as an H-back. Follow him frequently. And a cutback Goldberg into the middle and it was soft. First down Spartans to the 41-yard line. Sam Sword makes the stop. Now, in the secondary, this is where Michigan may stand head and shoulders above almost anybody in the Midwest. They'll feature Charles Woodson, number two, on that one corner. He also will be used as a wide receiver offensively. He is the best all-around athlete on this Wolverine team. First down now for the Spartans. Beard checking with Schultz as he brings the offensive line to the line of scrimmage. They move Goldburn out as a flanker over on the left side, and they will power the fullback straight ahead, and Bowens jumped him. Well, Gary Tranquil, the offensive coordinator at Michigan State, told me, first off, we are not going to be conservative. We will attack these people. We can't just sit and play uh, conservative football. They'll get after them. They are want to run. They, they, they've got three runs, Brent, that they want to play check with me on the line of scrimmage and try to get the best run against the best defensive front. And I, that's what they did on that first run that broke up inside. Second down and eight. The play is signaled in from the Spartan sideline to Schultz. Long is the motion receiver. Wobbles complete. Long has got it at midfield, short of the first down. And Sword was there defensively along with Ray for the Wolverines. Well, first thing they did for Schultz that time, they gave him time to throw the football because they were... Michigan was in tight bump and run coverage and a receiver needs a little bit more time to maneuver and get away from that kind of coverage. The protection allowed him to sit in there and concentrate on the throw. The freshman sensation from Miami. You wonder how Cedric Urban, who has checked in, number 33 at tailback, is enjoying this weather. This has to be the coldest day that he has ever <laughs> played football in. Let's see if he gets a call right away. They use him right side. Oh, it's getting warmer by the footstep. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. First down, Spartans. Brian Masullum, the big offensive right guard, number 63, did an excellent job of pulling out, and then the fullback led him running through there. See what I'm talking about. Now follow the fullback, Gould, as he gets the lead block. The guard got the kick out. It was an excellent block right there, and another tremendous block by Brian Masullum. So Irvin opens up with a 15-yard run, stays in now, and Gould, the fullback, offsets left. Tight end Kerr also there, so it's power to that side, and the strong safety steps up for Michigan. They'll run Irvin on a little bit of a cutback to the 31. Dick, talk about Irvin's style, who you'd compare him with. I know you were overlooking at the tapes at East Lansing. Well, I'll tell you this. He's one of these kids, he has a good burst. He's not extremely fast. He has a great change of direction because he can widen his base and make those right angle cuts as quickly as anybody we have seen this year. Tremendous balance, Brent. When you hit him, he'll ricochet off you and advance the football. I'm really impressed with this guy. I don't know how he ever got out of the state of Florida. Neither does Bobby Bowden. Second down and six. Straight eye. Schultz, quick pop. Now that's 25-yard line. 
first down. What that was was an audible just between the receiver and the quarterback. They call it smoke. And it's, they yell smoke as soon as they see a corner backed off like that, and they want to get the ball in his hand quickly, Mason's hands quickly, just because he's a fine runner after the catch. This is a very efficient drive as Mason just made his 100th career catch for Michigan State. Number 80, ace return man. He is now split out to the left on first down. Woodson takes him, and Long will be a slot man in motion over there. Goldberg back on the field is hit for a loss by number 43. Clint Copenhaver makes the biggest defensive play of this series for the Wolverines. Very big play because now you put him in that second and stream uh, long yardage situation, second and 16. The big thing is now Tranquil will not be greedy. He will not try to go get 16 yards. He'll try to cut that probably in half, maybe even a screen pass or draw, but I doubt he'll go downfield uh, for the big uh, third down or first down conversion on second down. So they'll slot right. Long, perhaps their fastest receiver, is the slot man. Mason is outside him on this second down. Schultz fires complete to the left side. It's Urban. Makes a move and makes his way to the 18-yard line. Jack Aruth, this youngster, is something. And Brent, you and Dick wanted to know how did he ever get out of Florida? Well, this is a great story. It seems he played in the high school backfield with a guy that we know very well, Iowa State's Troy Davis. They were in high school in Miami. And he said, I decided to leave Florida when I saw how well Troy Davis did out of state. He said, I think I can make a better name for myself outside of the Sunshine State. That's why Urban's at Michigan State. Wonder if he misses the sunshine today. Coburn out to the left now and the fullback, and they bring Long in motion. Still a different formation. Saban continues to change up. Schultz's receivers are covered. Now he throws. Got him. Out of bounds. No catch for Mason. Didn't get the foot down. The side judge was right there. And Mason is arguing with him. I don't blame him. From up here looking down, I thought he got his foot in, Brent. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I've been wrong before, maybe once in my life. But it looked like to me that he got it down. It was a broken play. They rolled out all the way. The coverage took away the pattern. Initially, then Mason, with his experience, you just said he caught his 100th ball. He has experience in this league. He goes ahead and, and pushes it into the end zone. See, complete rollout. Get away from the rush. Good call. Now it's a broken pattern downfield. Here it's up. He's up in the air. I think he's in bounds. I'm not sure. Gardner, meanwhile, will attempt a field goal. 35-yarder. And he puts the Spartans on the board. So the field goal, and let's take another look. Remember now, the side judge who made the call should be looking right at the heel down the line. If he missed it, he's blind. He's standing behind the man. Now let's watch Mason. Even that's not definitive with that toe, but remember, that fellow right there in his striped shirt, he should not miss that call. He was right there and at a better angle than I had, but looking down on it, it looked like the right foot came down just parallel with the white sideline markers. Here's another shot of it. Left-hand corner. Well, I'll tell you, to me, that's in. Well, I think I don't. Plus, I think I think I think the official's looking up. I don't see in the angle of his head. He looks like he's looking up, not down. Well, maybe, maybe I'm seeing something into it that doesn't exist. But anyway, doesn't count. Let's play football. Seven three. The result of the field goal and Gardner to kick it off again with Derek Mason. Certainly been one of the more efficient offensive performers for the Spartans over the last several seasons. Butterfield and Shaw are back deep. Shaw at the goal line. 15. 19-yard line. You know, and some head knocking going on in this neighborhood war. Let me tell you that. If Michigan does have a weakness, it's in their kickoff return. They're only averaging 19 yards a return. And, you know, people as skilled as all these athletes, athletes are in the blue and gold, you would expect them to have a better average kickoff return. Oh. Dick, tell me now why Michigan featuring the two tight ends. What does that give them against this Spartan defense? Well, it stabilizes the defensive front because they like to play an over and an under, and it allows them to check to what they think is the weakness of the defense and run. 
Williams will run on first down, sweeping to the right, and oh, he nice is tackle. pounded by Garland. Why? The linebacker stepped over there and took him on. You know, so many times when, a, like a Reggie Garnett, the starting linebacker is not starting and playing, and he hasn't, he's been out of there, a Tyrone Garland-type kid steps in, and every week that he plays, he gets better. Right there, that looked just like Garnett making that play. He squared off and gave him the pads and knocked him back. Nice job there, young man. Wide receivers shuttle the plays in and out for Coach Carr and the Wolverines. Shaw brought it into Dreisbach. It'll be second and six for the Wolverines. Streets is off to Dreisbach's left, and they'll bring Shaw in motion. Fake to Williams. Looking down the middle. Dreisbach right side to win. Out of bounds complete at the 48-yard line. Back to his tight end again. See, last time they ran that formation with that form of motion, they ran the counter gap play. This time they fake that backfield action and run the crossing patterns. Here he is on the end of the line of scrimmage. He comes off. He'll cross the field looking for a zone. to. You'll see the linebacker chasing him there, but a very well-thrown football. This is what I said in the open. He throws the difficult balls accurately. 24-yard gain for Tuman on that play. He scored the Wolverines touchdown. They lead Michigan State 7-3. First and 10 at the Michigan 48. It's Howard who checked in on a slippery cutback, and he smashes to the 44 of the Spartans. This will leave them with short yardage for the first down. There was a case defensively that Robert Newkirk the defensive nose guard in there playing on Rod Payne got great penetration and opened the hole up laterally. He got so much penetration, they were able to get up underneath him. Ike Reese is taking the defensive signals from the Spartan sideline and passing that message on as Dreisbach has a word with Howard coming to the line of scrimmage. Dreisbach after Ein. The alignment makes his call, and here comes Howard looking for daylight short, I believe, of the first down. He was jammed up in the middle. Chris Smith, number 96, who has played well as of late for the Spartans, was one of the key men there defensively. There's a real battle going on in the inside of the offensive line and the inside of the defensive line, not line between Rod Payne and the two defensive tackles, Chris Smith and Rob Newkirk. We have a man down. I could be Newkirk. Robert, the freshman. Could be down. We'll have to wait and see before we confirm that, Dick. But it looked like it was 62 to me who went down there in a heap. So while we've got a moment, let's talk a little bit about the prime time lineup here on ABC. Tomorrow, we might want to arrange Sunday night around this, huh? The Lion King comes to network television. 7 Eastern, 6 o'clock here in the Midwest. Disney's The Lion King on ABC tomorrow. So while they tend to the fallen Spartan, let's take a break. Four minutes here in the first quarter. Michigan 7, Michigan State 3. And now on third and one, they will come up with the fullback powering straight ahead. And it was John Ames, the big fella. And he was met with resistance there by the Spartans. We'll have to see where they spot that ball. The Spartans are saying, yes, it's short. Big Ag Reese there is saying, let's see what they decide to do here on fourth down. So while they measure, let's check in with uh, Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, not good news for the defensive tackle, Robert Newkirk. Right behind me, the athletic staff, the trainers for Michigan State are working on him. They say preliminarily he suffers from a dislocated shoulder. Fourth down and that much. I think they have a good pooch punting game. They ought to pooch punt it. And here comes young Greasy. Brian Greasy, an outstanding pooch punter. And don't forget it, Ames as the short back. If ever they were going to fake it, leading 7-3, they've got the fullback lined up short if he spots anything. Another outstanding job by Greasy, the Poochman. 
It was a thrilling game. Elvis Gerback rallying the Wolverines. Goes to Derek Alexander, but still, they need the two-point conversion. Desmond Howard's open, but down he goes. Desmond claims he was tripped. Take a look. You be the judge. No penalty on the play. The Spartans escape with a 28-27 victory. And now the Spartans find themselves 95 yards away from the Wolverine end zone after that fine pooch punt by Brian Greasy. Goldburn is the lone running back. Snow flurries again on this November Saturday. No gain against the heart of that Michigan defense. Well, Greg Madison, the defensive coordinator from Michigan, said they were going to try to stop the run with seven people because Michigan State does such a good job with their passing game. They didn't want to get an eight-man front very often. That time, they moved up late into an eight-man front, meaning they brought the safety up in there late, and they can better attack the run with eight people. That's what they did on that snap. Schultz has been extremely efficient, but will the Spartans throw from this field position? Yes, they will. From out of his end zone, snaps it complete to Long, and Long is down close to the first down marker. The spot will determine it. Woodson, the defender for Michigan. You see how poised he set in the pocket. How he set in there. It was a tremendous time to throw the ball. They doubled Carr. Now they're playing zone. Woodson number two. He just stops in the zone. But what made everything like that work was good pass protection. And they doubled William Carr. And therefore, there was no inside the pocket rush. First down for the Spartans. Real good job of defense by Sam Sward of taking on the line, uh, the fullback and making it bounce to the outside, let the pursuit get over there and, and make the play. He's an awful good football player, and he'll be taking, picking up the slack next year when Jared Irons is gone. Second down and six. And Urban, an outstanding receiver as well as a running back, checks in at tailback for the Spartans. Fake Urban, snap left. Accepted. Pass was thrown high to number 80, and that, of course, was Derek Mason, and it almost was intercepted by Hankins. Well, he had to get the ball over the top of a linebacker, and that's one of the reasons it was high. See, now Hankins is bailing out, up, pretending like he's going to pressure him. He doesn't. He bails out of there, but the ball just a little too high and just a little too far. Played that position very, very well this year. They're very pleased with his performance. Michigan defense shows the nickel back. Third and six. Wolverines expect Schultz to put it up again. They're in a three-man rush now, so they can drop a lot of people. Goldburn stays in the block. He picks Bowens up. They fire far side line. Incomplete. And Michigan State forced the punt. Nick Saban, the head coach, told me one of his concerns in a punting situation that 88 Kyle Rance, this long snapper, is a true freshman, and his punter, Paul Edinger, is also a, tr a true freshman, Brent. So he's a little bit concerned about those guys in this pressure situation. Edinger was a little slow in pregame warm-ups. He's standing back on this part of the six-yard line. They look like they're going to come after it. one very high as a penalty flag he did not get two yards Chuck Winters was not given two yards to receive the punt and the penalty flag goes down on the Spartans we've seen that call more times this year than I think we have in the last few years and along with it long their fastest receiver injured his left arm he goes off to the sideline double jeopardy for the Spartans Catch interference, violation of the two yard radius on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, first and ten. We saw that we saw that called a couple of weeks ago, and that really was a bad call. Uh, I don't know about this one. I didn't read it quite as close as the official did. He was in all over him, coach. Was he? Yeah, there was no question. What happened was it was such a high punt. It allowed coverage a little bit extra time to get downfield. Dreisbach sends Michigan empty in the backfield again with Williams in motion. The offensive line deflected back to Dreisbach. In and out. A 
Caleb Williams' hands. That's two forward passes on one play. You can't do that. Not unless a defender touches the ball. They've got a flag down. That's going to be a loss of down. This is going to be a huge penalty. <laughs> <laughs> what a quick presence of mind for Scott Drys back. Back, he's going to set short. This is the same action they used to throw the touchdown pass. He gets back to him and he re-throws the ball. He can do it. On the offense, two forward passes during the down. That's a five-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Loss of down, second down. <laughs> no matter who deflected the ball, it is a completed pass back to Dreisbach. Then he is not eligible to throw the ball again as the Michigan State defensive line powered in on it. Definitely. Folks, this now is a second and 21. As long as lost him down, it's now second and 21. Tie streets. Splits far out to the left. Here's that unbalanced formation. They like to run to it. Drives back, rolls to it this time. Receivers covered. Good runner, and down he'll go at the 26-yard line. So the penalty put him in a hole, and Chris Smith makes the stop for this part. They started the game, the first play of the game, with this formation. Unbalanced to the bottom of the screen. More offensive players over there than and on, then on the top, and they sprint out behind it rather than running behind it. Pattern taken away downfield, no one to throw to, good pursuit. Third and 21, and Williams into the game. Williams is an outstanding receiver. 13 catches. He's averaged better than 12 yards a catch. Sometimes out of this formation, they will send him in motion and go empty. They don't this time. He broke the block. He's the underneath man. You brag about his ability to catch the football. <laughs> he wobbles it. <laughs> Don't give him those compliments. That was a screen pass all the way. They had the defense spread. The screen was set up there. Offensive lineman in position to go ahead and execute the screen. No go. Got to catch it first there, young man. Paul Peristeris standing at the Wolverine 12-yard line. 7-3 Michigan lead state. between these two. The battle for field position continues. Mason makes the fair catch at the 41-yard line for the Spartans. 28 seconds left here in the opening stanza. 7-3 Wolverines. Well, let's take a look at what ESPN's got coming your way. Last road trip of the season out of the state of Florida for the Seminoles who are on a roll and headed for that Tallahassee meeting against the Florida Gators. But they better not look past the Gators. Georgia Tech went into Tallahassee last year and played them tough in the first half. So that's coming up tonight on ESPN. Here it is, Schultz and the Spartans trailing now. Fake to Irvin, who's in a tailback. He's hit the face, and finally, Schultz goes down. Bowens hit him, along with Glenn Steele. Bowens is a gifted athlete. He was a linebacker a year ago. They asked him to move down to a down defensive end position on some of their defensive calls. He said, whatever I can do to help the team, I want to do it. He just, you know, he's more gifted as an athlete and more speed than an offensive man has uh, to block him, and therefore here he is in there getting to the quarterback. Goldburn, the lone running back, a slot formation to the right, a nickel defensive look as Tommy Hendricks checks in for the Wolverines. They'll run Goldburn against the nickel. So close to midfield, down at the 48-yard line, third and short. Dick, what's the advantage of when you see the nickel go ahead and run against it? Well, they first off, they have defensive backs, more defensive backs than linebackers. The other thing, in that formation, you spread that underneath coverage people out of there, and there's an automatic hole if you can block the initial inside linebacker, and that's what they did that time. So, that's the end of the first 15 minutes here in Ann Arbor. The Big House, Michigan Lead State, 7-3. ball game. Michigan scored its touchdown. Michigan State did not. You be the judge. Did he get a foot down in time? It was close. 7-3 as the Spartans settle for a field goal. Now they come up with third and four. Goldburn is out to the right as a wide receiver. 
I should say that's Irvin out to the right, and Goldburn is his running back. Schultz looks left, and he's got Mason for the first down. It was like stealing that time, Coach. Well, they blitzed the inside linebacker. When you blitz the inside linebacker, there was no one in that throwing lane. They did a good job of picking up the blitz. They threw the slant accurately. First down, you move the chain. Now, Lloyd Carr, 90, Will Carr, 96, is getting doubled, and if they double him a lot, he's not going to get to the quarterback. Plus, if they do double him a lot, they're going to move him around to a defensive tackle spot rather than the nose guard spot. Harder to double Will than Lloyd. <laughs> First down and <laughs> 10 for the Spartans. The ball at the Wolverine 42-yard line. Schultz on the roll, fires complete, and that's Nigeria Carter, who has been out with an injury, out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Gary Tranquil doing a real good job of keeping the Michigan defense off balance. A run on pass ratio on first down, changing up, moving the quarterback's pocket around. And this is what the defensive people at Michigan were concerned about. Tranquil does a great job of keeping you, of guessing at what he's going to do. Suck it down and three, and Gould comes in to give Michigan State a fullback in front of Goldburn, who's the tailback. Frequently, Michigan State will power behind him. They will this time. Gould leads the way. Goldburn reaches out for the first down, and we reach out to New York and John Saunders. John? Well, Brent, Miami Temple wasn't supposed to be much of a matchup, but Henry Burris, 31 yards to Troy Kersey here. The second touchdown pass he's tossed, the first of the season against Miami's defense. And right now, it's all tied up at 14 apiece. Right. And John here, Michigan State on the drive, trailing by four. They have reached the Wolverines' 30-yard line. Goldburn is the tailback. That's Gould, the fullback, stepping in motion like an H-back. Schultz, right side, overthrow. Woodson intercepts it in the end zone. It's coming out on the 20. It was a badly thrown pass. Woodson did not take the bite on the out and up move. They tried to pump baking and everything else. They were in a zone coverage, not playing a man coverage in that situation. And he just sat back there. And then Schultz, inexperienced as he is at quarterback, went ahead and threw a deep anyway, almost hoping it was going to be completed. To the right corner of your screen, the little pump move. Didn't take the out and up, young man. Don't throw it. Just throw it out of bounds. <laughs> Woodson, you know, he is a fine receiver as well. We'll see him as a receiver probably today. He got his first catch playing defense. So it's like a punt in the end zone, and the ball comes out of the 20-yard line now. First and 10 for the Wolverines. Dreisbach has Williams offset to the right, and they'll run the toss with Williams in that direction. He makes his way to the 27-yard line, a strong run. Again, that's real unbalanced formation. It's the first time they've used that this year. Really over overload offensive players to the one side and toss the ball out there quickly and mush up there for seven or eight yards. The defense has to slant that way. They have to kick the secondary around there and get in front of those people. They have more offensive players than defensive players at the point of that attack. Williams replaced by Howard. Howard exploded last week on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They haven't been so golden this year and now the flag comes down before the snap. Mr. Carter, number 95, moved a little bit. See, an offensive player must have moved first. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty, it's still second down. Jack Aroot. Hey, Brent, Scott Dreisbach has some really good genes when it comes to athleticism. You see, his maternal grandfather, he beat Bo Jackson. Listen to this in 1947. He was drafted by the Boston Celtics. He was drafted by the New York Yankees, took a $10,000 signing bonus. And George Hallis offered him a, a contract as well. But look at what Dreisbach carries in his pocket. Everywhere he goes, a picture of his grandfather, Ed Ellers, his rookie card from the Celtics. And back to Howard, who's taking the his way out to the 28-yard line on that second down and long, so he will put the Wolverines in third and short. Just go along with Jack was talking about Ed Ayler's. Ed Ayler's son, I coached the Philadelphia Eagles. Dreisbach's uncle coached him there for four years. Was a good outside linebacker for us. Dreisbach takes the signal from the sideline, and they will send in a little heavier back for him. That is Floyd. Third down and two. Two tight ends. Drives 
not going to throw. Hit at the release, and in. Tubman can't hold on. Good defensive pressure that time as Wright was blitzing the quarterback. He now has words with Floyd, but the blitzer got there on the release, and he may have jarred drives back just enough. And he made him throw the ball just high enough, just out of the reach. Marvin Wright is a strong safety. Good defensive change up there by Don Fees, the defensive coordinator. He calls the blitz. It'll appear from the right side of your screen. Here he comes. Wham! Aristeris into punt, standing inside the Michigan 15. That Spartan defense is shutting him down now. Derek Mason, who through the years has been an outstanding return man, waits. Going to give it a go from the 33. And Alley to the 40. Cut back now to the sideline. Makes the corner. Out of bounds at the 47. Derek Mason makes the most out of that return for the Spartans. We'll be coming right back to the big house. Iowa facing Illinois, and Scott Weaver, 17 yards to Jason Doolett, ties the game at seven apiece. That's where they stand. We'll keep you up to date right now. Brent, back to you. All right, John, the last time Michigan State lost was to Iowa in Iowa City. Here, the Spartans have the ball, a first down coming out from the 48-yard line. Schultz fires complete over the middle. He had Kerr. Two things are readily apparent there. Number one, the Spartan offensive line is holding up right now. And number two, Coach, Schultz has got a little mustard on that football. Yes, he does. And they're holding up when you throw a drop back pass on first down. You're less apt to get the real heavy rush. Gerald Irons, number 81, going up inside. No, there he's 37, brother. Excuse me. Jared, there, there, when you throw on him, you're going to get tattooed when you catch it. Second down and three. Toss to Goldburn. Alley cut back. Explodes first down across the 40-yard line. So the Spartans now have almost equaled Michigan's 128 yards of total offense. Keep this in mind. The Wolverines made 78 yards on their first possession. They've been shut down ever since. But the Spartans now starting to mix it up, and they're on the drive again. See, this graphic really displays what we were talking about. They're getting pass protection now that they weren't getting first of the year. Mason and Carter are the wide men. Here's Urban, the freshman. So they used the changeup and nothing doing that time as the Wolverines were ready defensively and Sam Sword jumps him. Sam Sword again. We mentioned his name a number of times. That he can move inside out on a play, and when he gets there, Brent, he can bend his knees and strike. You know, he's not a stand-up tall player. He gets down there at the level of those running backs with those pads down, and he can put you on your back. Dick, it's a luxury having two running backs like Goldburn and Irvin. Oh, no question. And, you know, and Irvin being a true freshman, what a replacement for Goldberg, who's the senior. Timeout. Schultz did not like the defensive alignment. He had Irvin a wide receiver, and Goldburn is his lone running back. But he checked the safeties out deep, didn't Time like out. what he saw, Michigan and he's going to go over to Coach Saban. There first. Well, a reminder tonight coming up on the network, pro figure skating. I want to check that out at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. That's tonight coming your way on ABC. Dick, what's your feeling about what you're seeing now between these two teams here, Michigan State and Michigan? Well, I really think it's the play calling right now from a Michigan stamp state standpoint, Brent, that they're mixing it up, you know, the throwing on the first down, both play action and, and drop back, and, and Michigan's defense, they're playing back there because they're concerned about that pass. They, go ahead. Well, Dick, I'm just going to point out the Rose Bowl scenario. Michigan fans are well aware. They got to win out and hope the Northwestern loses today at Penn State or at Iowa. Michigan State, though, a little bit tougher road. You see, Northwestern has to lose one game, but Ohio State must lose twice. So Michigan State really really trails the Buckeyes by a couple games. Interesting, Michigan State does not play Northwestern or Ohio State this year. So it would be a long shot. However, it's not a long shot for Michigan State to make it to a bowl game. Those fellows who are coming off the field, they're not renegades from Yankee Stadium. They were out just repairing the turf here in Ann Arbor. <laughs> so it is second down. Schultz takes a look at that Wolverine defense. Same formation they used when they called timeout. Carter comes in motion. Schultz looks, swing, Goldburn. Goldburn at the 40. 
looks for a hole to the 35, and this is going to be third and long for the Spartans. Well, the Wolverines blitz Tommy Hendricks, the true freshman nickel back that time. But again, good coaching. Todd Schultz sees it. He lays it off quickly. And they have to come to the, the inside coverage. People have to come and make the play. 41, Hendricks at the bottom of your screen. He gets picked up properly. The ball's laid off quickly. But the defense had good discipline and picked him up as he cut the ball. Third and nine. Slot formation to the right for the Spartans. Only rushing three, so they're covering with eight All people. kinds of time. Deep middle, got it inside the 10-yard line. Carter breaks free to the four-yard line. First and goal. They left Schultz all the time in the world, and it resulted in a 31-yard gain for the Spartans. Well, the Wolverines went to a three-down lineman defense, see? They rushed three people, covered with eight. Now see they're playing zone underneath there, and they just let him work in the zone. The time the quarterback had to pick that zone was just too much, and they got the ball to the right guy, Nigia Carter, who has been injured. Irvin back in at tailback. Behind the fullback, penalty flag, though, and it was prior to the snap. I tell you, the good thing that Michigan State has done offensively is down inside the red zone, Brad. They have done a great job. They get down there, they score, and they score a high percentage of touchdowns. Irons is checking the coaches. Disregard the flag. There was no foul on the play. Wow. We accept your what apology. A, oh, <laughs> what a time to throw the flag. First and goal on the snap. <laughs> yes, oh, sort of, baby, if I was saving, I'd be livid. I can't believe that. <laughs> now Schultz dashes back from the sideline. Ball is inside the five-yard line. Same formation. Irvin is behind Reese. He's audibly the direction. Irvin wants to make sure. Two tight ends. Goal line defense. Irvin tripped up. Loses three yards on the play. Michigan penetrated big time. Great penetration by, by Glenn Steele. And he's a strong, tough redshirt junior. And he got in there. And when you, he didn't make the play, he just ruined the play. It'll be at the top of your screen. You'll see some blue jerseys end up in the backfield there. Good job. See that pile right there? Nice job, Glenn Steele. That's how you play goal line defense. Get those pads underneath the offensive lineman and knock them on their keisters. You did a nice job. Passing situation. Second and goal from the seven. receiver if they circle him out but said they're going to use him on the toss nothing doing and that time he was hit by Sam Swords. Swords carrying the knife today I'll tell you you called his name I don't know how many times already Brent but uh, just backing up our praise of him so far he's coming from the left corner of your screen filling in there bang there he is good job Mr. Sword. It's hard to cut that guy off on a direct toss play because he sees the ball right now go to the tailback and he can take off. What he has to be concerned about is overrunning the play. He must stay behind the ball like he did that time. Interesting. The Michigan defensive package is the nickel right now. Bowens is back in as the edge rush man. They pull the extra tackle out. So it's a loose defense and Schultz will be looking at it right now. Touchdown, Michigan State. And this time, there's no question about him having a foot down in the end zone. No question, Brad. And, you know, I watched him run inside the 20 Wednesday on the practice field. It was cold, windy, terrible conditions. And I'll tell you something, Todd Schultz threw it accurately at that time, too. They call that the, the snake pattern, I think it was. It's a combination of three receivers and a bunch of little setup right there. The right side of your screen, a little motion to loosen him up right there. There was a corner pattern, a stop pattern, or a wide pattern, and he gets the stop pattern right there. Bowens injured for the Wolverines and down at the 14-yard line being tended to by the Michigan medical staff. This is a defensive player who was one of the targets of Michigan State today. They knew they had to keep Bowens off of Schultz. He's the leading pass rusher.
for the Wolverines, and obviously he appears to be able to come back and play in this game. So Michigan State takes a lead for the first time, and Gardner now with Bill Burke, backup quarterback. He's a freshman quarterback. He'll put the ball down. He's the holder for the Spartans. And like that, it is 10-7. So Michigan State connects with its first touchdown of the game. You're born, you go to school, and then one day, things begin to get interesting. Where there was once only a... Pays off, 7-7, Brent. Well, John, here, the Michigan defense has surrendered 10 points in the first half. They were yielding only 13 a game coming into this. Gardner kicking off for the Spartans. This is Shaw, 15. 25 out to the 29 yard line where Dreisbach and the Wolverines will have a first down. The Wolverines, except for that opening drive, coach, have been stifled. You no, know, and I think they ought to go back to it. The counter game they plan to use a lot in the ball game because of the quickness of the Michigan State defense. They wanted to slow them down, keep them in place with the counter game, then bounce outside. When they ran the counter in that opening drive, they ran it real well. They've got to get back to that kind of running play. Plus, I think it would be smart for them to think ball control because Michigan State's moving the ball too well on them. Now Brooks is a slot receiver for the Wolverines. Floyd and Williams, a power look in the backfield. Dreisbach swings to Williams. Floyd gives him a block. Beautiful block by the fullback to the 41-yard line. And Floyd is still down wrestling at the 30. I mean, it wasn't a block. It was a bury. That was an automatic swing pass to the tailback. They, it's designed to get out there right now. He's not looking at any other receiver. They used the slot people to block to the inside. We had a fight right there at the bottom of your screen. Good little stutter step there. Advanced the ball another five yards. You get the ball in Williams' hands in the perimeter of the defense, he's going to make some yards. That was Floyd who was tangled up with a strong safety. Marvin Wright. <laughs> it was good judgment. He had his helmet off. So stop it right there. Yeah. Tuman tied into the right. Campbell to the left. They go empty in the backfield again. Dreisbach has time. Hits Williams. Williams to the 46-yard line. See, they're not making that mistake anymore with the safety and the linebacker screwing up on that tight end down the hole that gave them the first touchdown, Brent. See, they've adjusted. They made the mistake once and gave them six. They're not going to do it again. They force him to throw the little layoff pattern. Good for six yards with Butterfield bringing the play in for the Wolverine sideline to quarterback Dreisbach with the hand warmer. The high today expected to be only 35 degrees here in Ann Arbor. Williams. Reese comes up over the top and cleans up. That's, Williams gains a yard. That was that counter I was calling for, but this time defensively they come with a blitz. They get eight people up there and they bring them in. There's no place to run. For a second it looked like they had it blocked, but it closed because everybody was coming. Desmond Thomas, defensive tackle off the Wolverine bench and on that stop. And Williams, I should say off the Michigan State bench and on that stop as Williams comes over to the Wolverine sideline. Now it is third and three. Dreisbach deflected to Shaw, complete to the 41-yard line, and the young man from East Los Angeles gives the Wolverines a first down. Good offensive play call that time by Freddie Jackson, the coordinator. Pass all the way. He's looking. He's not looking. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's going to step to the left of your screen light. He bit, and it gets tipped there by uh, Marvin Wright, number 18, the strong safety that's rolled up in that coverage. 6.07 yes. to go here in the first half with Jackson upstairs. Right there in the middle calling the plays. He's got a big game card. I saw it yesterday. Searching for something on that big card right now as the Wolverines trail it by three, but they're on the move. In the round, Butterfield brings it to the left side. Payne out in front. Reese won't be beaten on the play. No gain. Ike Reese. Good discipline by that Ike Reese. 29th start in his career. You aren't going to fool that guy very often. Look at that smile on his face. 
Here's Butterfield. He's going to step, come back. They toss the ball. Now he's accepting the reverse, and off he goes. I'm not so sure he shouldn't have kept going outside and rely on his speed to get to that corner rather than try to cut back. Second and ten for Dreisbach and the Wolverines. Streets split out to the left or the short side, and Woodson is now in as a wide receiver for Michigan. He's off to the right. They run Williams. Big hole, middle. Williams inside the 20-yard line. So a tendency all year. When Woodson appears in a game offensively, the Wolverines invariably give him the football. Michigan State takes the bait that time, and Williams explodes up front. Just a big huge toll on the quick draw right up inside. They don't run many draws, but when they run them, they run them well. Both tackles went to the outside, defensively that is, and they popped it right up through there. On the first picture, you could see Sori Canoe, the free safety, move to the left. He went in the direction of Woodson and evacuated his spot. 21 yards on the run, and now first down for the Wolverines. It is Howard. Again, they pound the middle. They're finding it soft to the 12-yard line. I'm not so sure it was soft. Is that Rod Payne picked up the stunning defensive tackle and blocked him to his left, and they ran right up in behind him. It was a good job by Rod Payne, number 52, the All-American center. Look at Carr with his hand on his best athlete. <laughs> Get in there and win this one for me. Far away. <laughs> Stay right here. I've, I've got an idea. Score a touchdown. Here comes job security. Number two dashes, but he's coming late. And Michigan. He's got to get in there. Second down and three. Now he has split out to the right. Michigan State. Do they have him matched up? He arrived late. Dreisbach looks in that direction and he hit a diving attempt by Woodson, who made the catch at the 11 yard line, but he was down as he made the catch. Yeah, well, Dreisbach was pressured by Mike Austin and he couldn't throw the ball well you know, never want to get singled up in this guy if you can help it because he's really a gifted athlete he's having a little foot pr problem right there but the throw was not what it ought to have been third down and one the first things first here for the Wolverines Howard is the lone running back H back Campbell is over with two minutes power to the right side Howard to the middle for the first and goal you notice they put Howard in there at 208 pounds and take Williams out of there at 170 pounds. Stronger, more physical guy going straight ahead. Last week he broke one up inside against Minnesota for, for a big 86-yard touchdown round. He can break tackles inside. The worst thing Michigan has done offensively this year is score touchdowns in the red zone. They've kicked too many field goals. Just inside the 10-yard line. Wolverines with a first and goal. The ball at the Spartans' 10-yard line. Shaw and Streets are off to the right. Campbell is flexed behind Kuman. Howard, the running back. The call, right side. Spartans cut him off, and he battles to the eight. See, they're no longer getting the advantage from that unbalanced offensive formation, lining everybody up to one side and running behind it. Now the defense has made the adjustment. They're slanting to it. Here's Tuman number 80, coming out on Reese. He's doing a pretty good job. But see, Reese knew where they were going. It was an unbalanced, and he was slanting in that direction. You might as well, because that's where they're going. Change of formations you've never used are usually good two or three times at the most. And from then on, good defensive people like Nick Saban and his staff will go ahead and shut it down. Carr sends Williams back into the lineup. He'll be used as a slot receiver to the right. Floyd is the lone running back set behind Dreisbach. They're late lining up properly. Dreisbach looks left, got a one-on-one -on -one shot. Penalty flag, touchdown Wolverines. But there is a penalty flag. Could have been tackling Shaw early. It was thrown down in the end zone. Michigan State defensively was not organized on Touchdown, that call. Touchdown, Wolverines! They were lined up improperly initially, then they switched and got lined up properly, but late. And Shaw did a real good job of getting underneath the one-on-one -on -one coverage. See, if you're one-on-one -on -one and they have no safety help, you don't want to let them inside there, Mr. Hill. That's number 10, Mr. Ray Hill. Remy Hamilton. Captain Ramirez, defense. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The touchdown is good.
Double jeopardy. Surrender the touchdown and lose yardage on the kickoff. The Wolverines score for the second time here today. Hamilton. Perfect on the extra point. And it's 14-10, Michigan. Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And U.S. Navy. Navy, let the journey begin. 209 left first half. Michigan regains the lead 14-10 over Michigan State. Feely puts the ball on the tee. He'll kick it off here for the Wolverines. And remember after the penalty, the ball has been teed up at midfield. And even with the win, you would think now that Feely can move this out of the end zone. We'll see if that's what they want to do. He's been doing it without the win in past games. Yep, into the bleachers. First row. Well, Russell Shaw is a young man from East Los Angeles. The Los Angeles Times sent a reporter in to interview him the week of the UCLA game. First thing Shaw said, you're going to have a picture in the paper. He'd never had his picture in the Los Angeles Times. He came here from a junior college. He's a junior. He's one of those fellows. His mother got to make her first airplane trip a little bit earlier this fall. Came back here to Ann Arbor. Watched the young man play. He's out of East Los Angeles. No controversy surrounding Russell Shaw. Mom and dad kept him on the straight and narrow. And here he is now with a touchdown catch for the Wolverines. And this is Urban, the freshman his way beautifully and still battling to the 25-yard line. Well, let's check in with our friend John Saunders to see what's ahead now on the Valvoline Halftime Report. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96, all the day's scores and highlights, plus Todd, you had a chance to go to Chicago and meet the miracle worker. Yeah, Gary Barnett, very impressive guy, very charismatic, and the magic continues. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 96. All right, John, we look forward to that. Here we're watching Cedric Adams take the toss, and he runs to the 26-yard line, so this will be about a third and four for Michigan State. Good football game. Yes, it's very good. And defensively right now, Michigan is doing a good job of pursuing and, and pushing those kind of plays out, and then when he cuts back, here comes the pursuit with a guy like Irons to make the play and, and other people in that last time. It was Joaquin Fazell coming in there. Those kind of people moving inside out after it's turned back inside. Urban being used as a wide receiver. He is split out to the left. Carter behind Schultz in motion. Rolls to the right-hand side. Incomplete. Mason going down to make the catch, and there is a penalty flag thrown on the play. I think they're going to call Joaquin Fazell for roughing the passer. Costly penalty here inside of a minute left in the first half. Gives them a first down. They would have had to punt. This hurts. From the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a number 90. Big, tall, young football player. Here he comes. The ball's been thrown, and he gets knocked down late. That's dumb football. That's dumb football. Now he's a redshirt sophomore. You can give him a mistake like that. Roughing the passer for a headbutt. Defense. 15 yards to the team with a three-year spot. Dennis Rodman can tell you how costly those headbutts can be. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd Carr. He's getting after it. <laughs> Schultz makes the call. Spartan Huddle. He has 55 seconds to work with. Trails by four. Michigan with the nickel package. Freshman Tommy Hendricks comes in as the extra defensive back. Bowens is the rush lineman. offensive line has done a good job against 96 cars so far here in the first half. Schultz with time fires complete to Carter close to midfield. Second and short and 46 seconds and counting there on the right hand corner of your screen. You're really right in saying the offensive line is doing a good job against Carr but the tackles are doing a good job on the outside pass rushers as well. Brent. Shotgun look now for the Spartans. by the Wolverine defense 
it's one of the best secondaries in college football. Marcus Ray saw that all the way. He was moving inside out on the coverage. The ball was thrown to the outside. You'll see it from the left-hand side of your screen. He flashes inside. See, he was moving prior to the snap. That was his responsibility to get there. He takes it away. I sat and watched film with him on Thursday for about an hour. He changed his major from engineering to business school. He wants to be an investment banker. He's got his head screwed on right. Came to Michigan, lives in Columbus, Ohio. Wanted to go away from home. Wanted to play against his teammates in high school. Went to that school up north. That school up north. First down and 10 now. Ball at the Spartans 19. Big series. Here's Williams. Cut back. Looks for daylight right side. Jitterbugs. Inside the 15 yard line. And now keep an eye on that clock as the seconds start to tick away here. The Michigan with its timeouts remaining. Second down and seven. Over three of them, you might as well use them. So let us take a quick break and then we will come back for the remaining 19 seconds. If they can attack the middle of the field means they do not have to throw the ball into the end zone. They're already well within field goal range here. 19 seconds can be an eternity in football when you've got two timeouts. The only thing the coaches were reminding the quarterback of call the timeout immediately as soon as we can to save the seconds. And now drives back, brings them out. Shaw and Screech off to the left. Woodson on the field offensively to the right. You know they got something in a package for him. Drives back, looks over the middle, throws a touchdown! Tuman, his second of the first half. The turnover, costly to the Spartans. Saban's team now will have to rally in the second half. Twenty-one ten. Michigan did a real good job again of spreading the defense all the way across the field. Now Tuman gets one-on-one -on -one situation with the safety Marvin Wright, number 18. He gives a little stick move to the outside. He has no help inside. The ball is thrown on time in rhythm and into the end zone for a touchdown. The coaches told us yesterday that Tuman is a gifted athlete and destined to be one of the finest tight ends that ever played here. Out, and he's proven it today. Take a look again from up high, left-hand side of your screen. He comes off inside, good pass protection. They handle in the rush inside, right down over the middle. You can throw it there when there's no safety there. They were man all the way across the board. So they came in raving about Todd Schultz. But Tuman has caught two of the three touchdown passes thrown here in the first half by Scott Dreisbach. We'll go back to one statistic on Dreisbach. He is a winner. His only loss as a starting quarterback for Michigan came at Northwestern when the defense simply did not hold up in the fourth quarter. This young man can find a way to beat you, and the Wolverines up 21-10. No, you know, when I went back and watched that fourth quarter of defense, too, and that Michigan didn't play as well, but you got to give credit to Northwestern for doing what they did. So Well, they've got enough time with the two timeouts there to run possibly three plays if they call the right one. But you also have a real good field goal kicker, so that's going to enter into your thinking right now. Get the ball up there, get the timeout call, maybe go for the field goal a little bit earlier. He just it goes right between his arms. There it is. They're alert to pick up that football. That was Kevin Bryant. Who was coming in for the Wolverines. That was Art Morris, a, a backup corner, who was there trying to field that punt, too. So quickly, Floyd is the running back. They line up three wide receivers to the left, including Williams. Offensive line. Gives drives back time to the middle. by Scott Dreisbach. Two turnovers, an interception and a fumble, and the Wolverines light the Spartans up for 14 points. That different formation offensively, Brent, 
confused the young defensive football team. They did not get lined up properly, and when they did get lined up, it was late. Therefore, the discipline of the defense was not good. Execution perfect. Touchdown. Hamilton. Four touchdown passes by Scott Dreisbach here in the first half. <laughs> Two to two, one to Shaw, and now the best athlete in Ann Arbor, Woodson. You can see right here, the defense getting late. They're, they're yelling at each other, hey, where do I go? No, you go there. One guy's pointing left, one point's right, and they snap the ball and throw the touchdown pass. Good change-up formation that they hadn't seen before. That's the disadvantage of an inexperienced defense. Here's Woodson coming inside on the post. Marvin Wright, number 18, overruns it. There it is for the six-pointer. Two touchdowns in 19 seconds. And Dreisbach, I said early, this guy can throw the difficult balls accurately. I don't know if he has a limitation. Can't beat Northwestern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if they try to light him up with another pooch kickoff. 28 to 10. Still eight seconds. This time along the ground. Looking for the high hop. Bobbled again. Picked up at the 25-yard line to the 35-yard line the last three seconds here in the first half. So in a 19-second flurry, the Wolverines blow this one open. We've got Valvoline halftime coming up with John Saunders and Todd Blackledge. Somebody tell my friend Mr. Blackledge that Corey Dillon out in Washington reminds me more of Lou Gehrig than Wally Pipp. <laughs> He's not old enough to remember that. It was Pipp who went out. He's she, he, Todd. <laughs> Three seconds now. We got a timeout by the Spartans. They have a choice to just flop on the football or go Geronimo and lay it up there making the decision right now. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, you know, they've made a lot of talk about Charles Woodson being Michigan's Dion playing both ways, but the story as to how it came about is so very interesting. Woodson was being touted at a Big Ten luncheon and sat down with Lloyd Carr's coach, and he said, you know, coach, I'd like a chance once in a while to get the ball. How about I play offense? Carr said it didn't take him long to say, we'll make room for you on the offensive side of the ball. We can see why. Helps yeah. to sit next to the head coach at those luncheons, Jack. <laughs> you know, Fred Jackson, the offensive coordinator, has a game card game plan and everything, and he has one corner, the upper right-hand corner, says Woodson. And these are the things we're going to do with him when we put him in the football game. It's all pre-programmed. Michigan State will feel real good about getting inside that locker room. They'll be discouraged, but remember, 30 minutes of football left in this one, and now it is up to the Michigan State coaches to lift their spirits and get them back in this one. Before those two turnovers, they were playing a fine football game. They're lining up to go with a Geronimo throw. Three wide receivers at the top of your screen. Schultz, maybe they look at the old Colorado film. Here it comes. Woodson up high, out of bounds, and incomplete. So there's that man again, number two, catches one in the end zone for a touchdown, and now puts a hand on the last play of the first half. Michigan, an eight-and-a-half point favorite, leads it now by 18. Michigan State took a 10-7 lead on the Wolverines, and they did it with this touchdown pass from Todd Schultz. He hit Derek Mason, his senior wide receiver. This is the second touchdown of the year for Mason. But then, in a stunning sequence, within 19 seconds, Michigan had already scored once a pooch kickoff. On the turnover, recovered, and they turned it loose. And they turned the ball and put it in the hands of Mr. Woodson, number two, coming in on the post pattern there. Defense unorganized, didn't get lined up properly, moved over late, and they throw the perfect strike down the hole for the touchdown. So Todd Schultz warming up and preparing to lead the Spartans back. The numbers 
And of course there is one that stands out. That's the number of turnovers. But what else looks good to you here, Coach? Really, the, the graphics the, don't really tell a story. The story is the last couple minutes or last 20 seconds of the football game because you can see the three turnovers in the bottom of your screen ends up 14 points right there. Everything else plays 34 apiece. Yes, total offense a little bit more in favor of Michigan, but an even football game prior to those circumstances right before the half. Dreisbach, four touchdown passes, and we were reminded down below in the press box that no Michigan quarterback has ever thrown five touchdown passes in one game. I think it's so against the law here. Dancing <laughs> with the history books here. I know. I'll tell you, what impressive numbers. 11.6 yards per pass attempt in that first half. Hey, Schultz's numbers are good, too, but the two interceptions have hurt. Jay Feely with that successful pooch kickoff that resulted in a turnover drives this one toward Mason. The nine yard line, the Spartan return ace. Looks left and he is tripped up, ball down, but he said he is down. He was whistled down at the 27 yard line. The Spartans and Schultz will go to work here, trailing 28 to 10. Goldburn. The running back as Schultz brings the play in from Coach Saban's sideline. Two costly interceptions thrown by Schultz. One he was going in, and you can see that also occurred late in the first half. Goldburn, middle is cut off, second and long, and there's Big Ben. You know, when if they get in the real goal line offense, so far they've been scoring from out away from the goal line area. But when they get in the goal line formation, he's the blocking back. They'll also throw the ball to him, and he'll run the football. He's quite an athlete for a nose guard. He doesn't like all this fancy passing going on. <laughs> he wants some of that old-fashioned Bo Schimbecker. Second and ten, high formation. Play fake. Bowen's coming. Schultz still hits Gould, the fullback for about five yards. You know, the Michigan State's offensive line is doing an excellent job of giving Schultz time and sitting there. I don't know how long it was, but Bowens was coming around top of your screen, coming around Mud 65, but Mud does a good job of holding him. <laughs> he grabbed him both hands and got away with it. Go ahead and complain. Mr. Bowen, the head came into the ball game with 11 sacks, 14 tackles for loss. He is a pass rusher. Third and five. Carter's the slot man down to the right. Urban, the freshman running back, is split out to the left. Schultz. Goldberg to the 41-yard line and a first down, but there is a penalty flag. Well, they missed the holding call last time, so they said, hey, we made a mistake, didn't call it, we'll call it this time. <laughs> Not going to get away with it two plays in a row. Nick doesn't like that. Boy, this guy has done a remarkable job of coaching this football team. Holding offense. 10-yard penalty is the spot of the foul. Replay, third down. You know who really told me that? It was George Perlis, the ex-head coach. He said it's just remarkable the performance that this man is getting out of the athletes he left there. He said some of these guys aren't as talented, and they're playing really well. Frankly, I think the guy on the other sideline is doing a heck of a job today. So do I. Just over 20 yards to go. It is third down and 21. The slot man again, Carter to the right. Octavius Long to the left. Schultz, middle, overthrows Carter. Well, they played him a little bit of man-to-man -man coverage underneath and took away the short throws. And he worked down in between those two safeties but he just didn't throw it accurately. But boy, he does have a strong arm. That ball is humming going down there. Paul Edinger. He will be standing inside the Spartans' five-yard line. Let's see if the Wolverines go out after this one. Edinger with one punt already blocked this season. They're coming. Down goes the putter. There's the penalty flag. Penalty on the play. Catches by Winters back at the 37-yard line to the 42. Now, if this is just running into the putter, it is not a first down. However, if it's roughing, then it will be. 
I think it's just running into. I don't think they can call that really roughing. It'll be a five-yard penalty, right? Exactly. They did come after it. They stepped up. Top of your screen, number 42, blue, getting in there. It runs into him. No, that's just running into it. And a good acting job as well. Just a true freshman, Edinger did a good job of acting. Well, they might as well decline it. That was a pretty good punt. And yes. It was covered pretty well. Yes. Running into the kicker on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. Another look, and here Chandler, number 42, comes around there. And other people, look at, they're trying to get out. I'm not sure, sure anybody hit him. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Wolverines. They'll go to work on their own 42-yard line, leading the Spartans 28 to 10 here in the early minutes of the second half. Still looking for the same kind of rhythm that existed back in the first half. The score is misleading. The Spartans were playing well, but then they played turnover, and that turned this game completely upside down. That Shaw got a touchdown pass with the forward motion. Howard, the running back, slammed behind the right side and moves the pile. Michigan came right out. Nine play drive touchdown. Then they were really bogged down. Punt, punt, punt. And then they had a nice drive. 11 plays touchdown. Then the two turnovers. Bang, bang. They're in the end zone. And they have the good lead. Here's Woodson checking in. He again is laid off that bench. They keep him disguised. He's down to the left side. Cornerback shows bump and run. Drives back eyes to defense. Makes the call on the line. Short drop. Wants Mr. Woodson. Got to go deep. Woodson breaking through. But he was out at the 21-yard line. Well, Dreisbach saw that tight, what you said, bump and run coverage. Now, he was backed up by a safety, but he hit, went ahead and tried to throw that fade down the sideline. He just pulled him a little bit outside. There he is on number 10, Ray Hill. He takes him down the sideline, gets a little too wide, and then the ball pulls him on out of bounds. Hill knows he's beaten. The safety should be there by now. Woodson stays in the game. Remember, frequently, they like to run it in around. You could also bluff with it. Williams very deep as the lone running back. Two tight ends for Michigan. They have featured two tight ends most of the day. Here is Williams. Dances to the left. Now turns it up. Crosses midfield. Williams out of bounds inside the 40. So good use of Woodson as a decoy finally as they run away from his side of the field and Williams is successful. This strictly athletic ability. They want to run the draw up inside which they were successful with in the first half. They start up inside. There's nothing there but ability and speed. He just breaks outside. The three white jerseys cannot accelerate to the sideline as quickly as he can run there. Real good innate running ability by Clarence Williams. I'll tell you who's going to be impressed by this game. The Ohio State coaches. The Wolverines are coming to Columbus. Trala, trala. Dries back now with Shaw off to the left. Play fake roll right. Behind Campbell's block. Fires and he's got Shaw just short of the first down. I'm going to tell you, this guy can really hum that football. <laughs> He really can. He has tremendous poise. And Shaw is a guy as a receiver. You talked about him earlier, Brent. It's really starting to mature as a receiver within the offense. It was a misdirection pass. Now, this is a very, very accurate throw. And each time he's thrown the ball downfield, he has been right on the money. That is so hard to defend. That stuff when you've got a big offensive line, line or sound running game. And you, uh, you attack the line of scrimmage with a run fake, and then he keeps the ball and comes off the back side. Tough on the defense. Second and one. Will the Wolverines go for the juggler here? Ty Streets is out to the right. Hasn't been a huge factor today. Butterfield is to the left. Howard's the running back for the Wolverines. They'll run Howard. Keep the clock moving. First down. Inside to the 23. Strong run. Butterfield shaken up on the play. is slow, but now he's up. Strong run. Strong blocking by center Rod Payne. Zakadami right guard. And John Jensen. And Campbell, number 88, is not known as a receiver, but he is a good physical blocker. See, now he turns him to the inside, and that allowed Howard to jump to the outside. Nice block by Mark Campbell, showing good technique, good coaching. First down at the Spartans, 23. 28-10, Wolverines lead and on the move again. He's got to go ahead and come with some kind of a change-up blitz. Get after him. they got five people down. That's a change-up. Here's Howard. Left is wide. 
wide open. Ran the simple slant to the 20 yard line and where Tyrone Garland was over to make the hit. Garland's been playing well in there, Brent, moving inside out as long as you know that uh, everybody else is stripped and knocked down and they don't have an extra blocker to block him. He has been getting to the ball carrier. But they probably missed the experience of Reggie Garnett. Again, he is out of that lineup because of an injury. The medical staff cleared him, but the coach didn't think he was ready. There was a chance that if they used him and he re-injured himself, he might be lost for the rest of the year. So Michigan State is going to play it cautiously here today. And the Wolverines have exploited that defense as a result. Butterfield in motion. Here's the hand. Now Howard. And now the right's open off that slam. He's got it inside the 15. First down. Penalty flag. Did they grab the face mask? See, what's happening was the two wide receivers outside the tight end. The defensive secondary is moving out to cover them. That time they dropped off the outside linebacker on the side of the run. No, it's but a hold. It's going to be a holding anyway. But anyway, it really softens the outside corner. But I think they did miss a face mask right there. No, no question. He had his hand up there on the face mask. <laughs> Replay, second back. Ty Streets downfield, guilty of holding. That's why the flag was thrown where it was. Well, we know Ty Streets is a wide receiver and has good hands, but he just used him improperly. Outstanding high school basketball player out of Chicago. Once lit up Kevin Garnett, I'm told, by my basketball spot. Second down and 12. And Woodson, the motion receiver, is going to get it. Woodson makes the turn. Or excitement or what? If he'd have stayed outside, he might have put the ball in the end zone. You know, he doesn't get to carry the ball very often, but his rushing average is unbelievable. It's 35.3 yards per attempt. Give it to him more often. But if he'd have stayed outside on that one, I think he had it. Boy Card getting more excited, gaining more confidence in this offense. I think he's allowing him to open up. Brooks, a young freshman there doing a real good job. Left-hand corner of your screen is sticking and staying. Good job. Third and one. Behind the H-back, Howard cuts off that block. And let's see if he gets the first down. While we do that, John Saunders, how about the Cornhuskers against the Sooners? Brent, they had the big lead at halftime. And here on third and six, Eric Moore is picked off by Ralph Brown. Now he takes off, picks up a couple of blocks early. Looks like he's got an easy lane to the end zone, but cuts back and then watch Jamel Williams at the end of the play. Right there, that last block that frees him up. Touchdown, 24-0, 84 yards on the return. Well, John, uh, Dick and I both think Nebraska is as good as any team in the country, despite that early loss to Arizona State. We have seen the Cornhuskers, and we have seen Arizona State. We wouldn't bet on Arizona State winning a rematch, would we, Coach? No, I would not. But hey, it only, when you only play once, that's when it counts. There's Stan Parrish, the quarterback coach. Back over to Nick Saban, got his arms crossed. And in game day, he doesn't get involved in calling the offense and defense. He just makes all the rules. He tells them when they can go for something in different situations. Oh, it's a first down for the Wolverines at the 13-yard line. Howard on the toss play is going to throw the halfback back to drive by. Incomplete in the game plan they finally used it and it was incomplete that does remind me of Jake Plummer that was the big pass he caught on the throwback and then he beat UCLA as he wove his way into the end zone they toss it back see, and this is tough especially if you're man-to-man -man coverage because you don't have anybody assigned to cover the quarterback actually if he'd have gone outside a little bit wider he might have been able to get there but they ended up being in a zone coverage and that left Ray Hill standing at home Running back Butterfield starts in motion, clears the formation to the right now. Howard, Jitterbug steps, runs for a touchdown. This is easy. David Jensen did an unbelievable job on that one. Right? He pulled out from his left guard position and he kicked out, meaning he trapped inside out on the defender coming upfield. And there was a hole in there you could drive a truck to. Nice offensive guard play by Damon Jensen. Mr. Howard, when he sees that end zone, he can get it today. They're three for three for touchdown from inside the red zone. Well, let me go back to the statistic we gave you at the very top of the broadcast. And remember, in each of the last seven times that Michigan State beat Michigan, as they did last year, the Wolverines have snapped right back and won the next out.
instead of concentrating on the running back, concentrate on the left guard, 51, Damon Denson, as he pulls across and gets a nice kick-out block that allows the running back to get up underneath there. Good job of inside-out trap blocking. Michigan State once led this game 10-7. Now they trail it 35-10. to Four unanswered touchdowns by the Wolverines. Nation from the two. Ten. Looking outside left. Smart return. 30. 35. Good return out to the 43-yard line. Well, Mason hasn't had the kind of year kickoff returning like he normally has had, but Tuesday we've got a big lineup on ABC. There you can see home improvement. And guess who's going to make an appearance on home improvement? In a couple of weeks, you're going to see our man, Jack Aroot. I can't wait. Covering today's turkey competition is Indy race car announcer Jack Aroot. It's Jack Beirut, isn't it? Or Jack A. Root. Is it A. Root? Is it Jack A. Root? Jack A. Root. A. All right. Now, Brent and Dick, we're done with them, okay? Right? You go to the Michigan, Michigan State game and just get them out of here. This is our big episode. This guy brings the tie like this. We've got professional people on this crew. We try to manage it. Get him off the college ball game where he knows what he's doing here. It's a big episode. The guy comes in with this kind of tie. What is this, huh? I'm telling you, we have a big episode. It's all made out of wood. At least his performance matches that. Anyway, I hope the game this Saturday works out well for you. Thanks. Get him out of here. <laughs> oh, Rudy, get off that set, kid. Come on, get on back here to Ann Arbor. There we are. Hey, look. I brought it back for you guys. <laughs> you I don't, don't blame him for being upset. I don't think so, Brent. <laughs> uh, hey, Jack, while we were watching you do your thing out in Hollywood, there was a 15-yard penalty, and the ball has been brought down inside the 40-yard line. So don't we've watch. got a second down now. And 10. So personal foul after the kickoff. And you can watch Jack Arute on home improvement prior to Thanksgiving, the Tuesday before. Show. And battle for the ball. Michigan State's got it at the five-yard line. I thought it was dual possession down there, and that must be what it was. There's Mason coming out. He returned the kickoff, drew the penalty. Now he makes the circus catch. And they rushed everybody, so they had a man-to-man -man coverage situation at the top of your screen. Now here it is. Oh, God, how he came down with this ball between those guys. Excellent throw right on the money, and good timing by Mason to go up and take it away. My gosh, that was a nice play. Watch for the freshman sensation, Irvin. In now at tailback behind the fullback on first down. Here he comes. A couple of yards. It'll be second and goal. He's the kind of guy, when you give him the ball, on, you keep the line of scrimmage clean, meaning you don't allow any penetration. He can find a place to run, and he, he can change direction so quickly. And just to think he's going to be carrying the ball for three more years. That's Spartan. Now goal line defense in for Michigan as Fuzell replaces the lighter Bowens. Irons passes the play call along, and they'll sit down now in goal line. They'll try to plug the gaps with the big bodies. number 81 did a good job of getting underneath the lead fullbacks block Garrett Gould and that forced him to really get running Steele chased him here he is a big guy see he, they run him outside like that to give him time but he didn't get any time because Steele beat the block good job by Glenn Steele Junior he'll be back in fact there's only three seniors on this defense starting third and goal and the freshman returns he had left the field momentarily. And now Urban is in the backfield and he will now slot to the right and timeout is called. It came in late. That substitution arrived on the field late and Schultz using a timeout goes over to the Michigan State sideline. 7.32 remain in the third quarter. We've got a timeout. McDonald's. Two affiliates of the ABC Television Network. It is WBKP, ABC TV 5 and 10 in Calumet and Marquette, Michigan. In the heart of Copper Country, the Upper Peninsula, we're proud to have them on our college football team. So welcome aboard WBKP. Now, first down. Here comes the running play for Michigan. 
Michigan State. They open up with Goldburn. Well, we mentioned is that Jack Arute had gone on to the trouble of researching this basketball game with the streets against Garnett. And it was a monster down in Champaign. And Ty Streets, who is now the ace wide receiver of the Wolverines, he had a field day offensively and defensively against Kevin Garnett, who now plays with the Timberwolves in the NBA. So now it is second and down. And this is Urban, the freshman, slashes on a cut out to the 34 yard line. And, uh, let's go back to John Saunders and check in on Nebraska. Big lead over Oklahoma, and here comes Scott Frost. 41 yards, he hooks up with Lance Brown. Touchdown for Lance Brown. Touchdown for Ralph Brown. Field goal from Chris Brown. And a touchdown from Amon Green. So the big red machine has Oklahoma singing the blues. Back to you. Oh, nice shot. Poetic on that route today. Now on first down. Schultz back in the pocket. Good block for the left side. He tried to hit Mason, who was out of bounds. See, from a defensive standpoint right now, Greg Madison, the coordinator, and he doesn't have to take any chances. He just has to make sure he doesn't give them up any one big play. If they do score, make it go the long way. And Carr, see, you haven't heard his name many times at pass rush. You know why? They're doubling him. They got a center and a guard. Here's Beard on him. And, uh, Ed, you know, as good as he is, it's tough to beat two people. I'll be surprised if they don't move him out of that position and put him over on the offensive guard, which I know is in the game plan. Dick, this Michigan defense gives them a chance against any team in the country. No question. I, I think they're as good as any defense we've seen. Not quite as flashy, but every bit as solid. Late movement by the Wolf Range. Urban cuts back into daylight now, and he is pushed out of bounds short of the 40 yard line. A penalty fly comes down. Words exchanged over there between Steele and Urban as they are out of bounds on the Michigan sideline. Factor in the football game, both uh, as a pass rusher and an uh, upfield push guy, not so much sacking the quarterback, but up there pressuring and, and, and playing the run. And also, on the quarterback rollouts, uh, we've called his name a number of times. He was doing a good job. Now I think they're debating whether he hit him out of bounds. Madison, the defensive coordinator, right there with a headset on, he wants to get involved in the decision. <laughs> Coaches will not approve of Steele's behavior if this results in a 15-yard penalty here with this big lead. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct on a substitute for an elbow against the runner. That's a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Someone from the sideline got involved when he ran out of bounds. Now 81. 81 right in the middle of your screen. Steele. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like he was just protecting you know, himself. I, you know, yeah, I don't think that's a good normally, call. Normally, he's normally playing. Yeah. You know, that was his reaction. Yeah. Here comes the running back. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He had to protect himself. Here he is, ladies up left side of your screen. Boom. He had to protect it. He wasn't going to give up, well, you know. What do you, what do you think, folks? Do you think he kind of <laughs> led with the right shoulder protecting himself? You be the judge. First down and 10. Here now is Irvin, and he is jammed at the line of scrimmage. Makes it second and 10. No gain. And a penalty flag comes down. There was a wrestling match going on, and Sam Sword was brought down to the turf late. The intensity is growing out there, and that time they ran a strong safety blitz, and they had eight people defense in that running play. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. On the defense? Correction. I think it's on the Oh, yeah. That's a correction. That's a dead ball, personal foul on the offense. <laughs> it's nice to know that they are human. <laughs> second down. Lloyd Carr feels a little better about that. Nick, not so. Schultz ready to go back in against Jared Irons and this tough Michigan defense. One of the better secondaries in college football. Irons, the ringleader, playing with an injured right ankle and turf toe. Set to the left. Schultz overthrows the intended receiver. Well, it's about that time of day when we check in to find out what the Burger King play of the day is, John. 
It is the Burger King update here, and it comes from Minnesota, Ohio State. Joe Germain in at quarterback. Hooks up with Matt Calhoun, seven yards in the touchdown, and the Buckeyes now lead by 17, although they have struggled in this game. Brent. Speaking of accurate throwing quarterbacks, yeah, Shane is very accurate. Make it third down, 25. Touchdown. Schultz. Middle deep, long, plus three, but he overthrows him. <laughs> he busted free, like you said, but and it should never happen in a third and long situation like that. Third in the world to go, and they allow him to get behind. They had very good pass protection that time. Offensive line doing a nice job of, of picking up the defensive line cross charges. Good coaching there by Jim Bowman, the offensive line coach from Michigan State. Chuck Winter is back deep. You would have think that Michigan would set a return here. Not risk running into Edinger, but let's see. If they'd have been coming that time, they might have done some business. Fair catch on the run, a dangerous fair catch at the 25 yard line. So the early scores unfolding here. And of course, this is doubleheader day. And in the Midwest, most of you will be traveling along to watch Northwestern at Penn State. That statistic which a few years ago seemed impossible. But now Northwestern has won 13 consecutive Big Ten matchups. But remember this, Penn State 50 and 8 at Beaver Stadium in November under Joe Paterno. Maybe that's why the Nittany Lions are a 10 point favorite in that game. Go figure, first and 10, drives by. Howard blocks for him, streaks and broken up, dangerous. That was Hill, the defender. Red Jackson again comes out on first down of a new series and throws a pass, you know, and I'm sure that Michigan State is anticipating ball control running thing. Good changeup, but if you're going to throw that, why not use a play action pass off the run? Michigan State needs three scores. Touchdowns, maybe a two-pointer, field goal. Also, three touchdowns would do it, but they've got to hurry. Michigan, meanwhile, wants to work on the clock. 2.57 left in the third. And off a cut is Howard into the arms of Marshall. With Hill, wrestles him down at the 27-yard line. That time they did a nice job of changing up defensively. Don Pease, the coordinator, puts five people down. A low side linebacker down the three, and they just bring all those guys and tighten up with those linebackers, looking maybe for the draw play. Well, next week, we will be at West Point. Air Force Army, looking forward to that one. You bet. Wishbone run at his best. We'll play that baby in two hours and ten minutes. <laughs> Third down for the Wolverines. Williams, backfield empty. Dreisbach counts on the offensive line, hit on the release, and it is incomplete, intended for tight end two, and right at the first down marker, Michigan will punt. And good pressure by Chris Smith, the defensive tackle. Anytime you get pressure in a situation like that and create the ball of the inaccurate throw, because we know Dreisbach's throwing accurately the entire game, they get the ball back here, forcing the punt. Big defensive play made by one defensive lineman. This could be a tough injury. Dreisbach was injured on the hand, and remember a year ago, in practice, he suffered a hand injury. Terrace Terrace. Mason's fair catch moves up and makes the catch at the 44-yard line. No flags are thrown on that play. But I would suspect that a lot of Wolverine fans are holding their breath right now about this hand injury. Doesn't appear to be That's too that bad. thumb, isn't it? Wasn't that that right thumb he was grabbing there? It looked like it. Jack Arut is hustling over, man, coming through the end zone. Look at Jack. We're timing you, Jack. Get there a little quicker. Without a doubt. <laughs> the quickest on course, man. Huh? <laughs> First down. Schultz. Off to the right, and Urban, the freshman, makes a move. Still on his feet. 
down at the 47-yard line, and Jared Irons defended him. You know who got in on that play? Nose tackle, Mr. Carr, Will Carr, 96. He was doubled on the line of scrimmage, so frustrated when they threw the ball. He found someone he could hit, but he had to run 25 yards to get there. Good hustle, Will Carr. Second down and six for the Spartans. Inside of two minutes. Mason split out to the left. Along with his speed is the slot man. He flares Irvin. Now he'll come underneath incomplete. Mason was standing there and they could not connect as Schultz was hit late and the ball was deflected. Well, that was Will Carr that got there late. But see, he held the ball for so long because the coverage took it away. There's Carr, number 96. This time he's getting just a little bit healthy, but he just keeps hustling. He's on Brian Masala, number 63. And the fact that Schultz had to hold the ball got him there. Third down for the Spartans. Play comes in now from the sideline. Goldburn. These are checked in at the running back. Irvin being used as a receiver. Kerr the tight end. Bowens. Time. Diving Got good. It. Mason. First down for the Spartans inside the 45-yard line. And with Woodson hanging on him, Mason made a heck of a catch. You know, and Michigan did a real good job of disguising their intentions. They showed a zone, then walked up late, and with tight man-to-man, -man, as we see on the screen, see, they're getting real pressure, those receivers are. But good protection allowed him to throw it. And as he threw it, he got hit and knocked on his back by Steele. Real good job by Todd Schultz. Nice job by Schultz. Here he is. You'll see the hit right as after he throws the ball. Bow! Down he goes. Good job by Schultz. First and ten for the Wolverine 44-yard line. Irvin cut back right, slipping. And reaches for a three yard. Jackaroo, what's up now with uh, Scott Dreisbach? Well, it was a big scare, Brent, but no, no big problem. Scott Dreisbach, his throwing hand, again, jammed the thumb back. Now, that was the one that he injured his thumb with before. But this is kind of fun. You see this? We've got a fellow here that's going to not let us take a look at Scott Dreisbach. Well, we got the explanation yeah. from the sideline. Good thing he kept it clean. Second <laughs> down, they set the screen, and it is Goldburn inside the 40 to the 39-yard line, short of the first down. See, he made a mistake. He had the screen out there, Brent, but he ran outside the lead blocker. If he'd have gone up inside him, he had a chance to make it work. So the final 10 seconds here of the third quarter ticking away. 35-17. Michigan leading and 15 minutes to go. So we'll come back for the final quarter here from Ann Arbor. And we'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. minutes to go in Michigan State trailing 35 17 this is a third and five at this point trailing 18 you would think that the Spartan coaching staff would have decided two downs to get the first down they send a motion man Carter in behind Schultz from the delay only needs one first down Irvin's got it at the 33 yard line that was that big tackle trap that they scored on earlier in the ball game Fazell does that awfully well he moves amazingly well for a 325 pound six foot seven man see pressure defense they're going to bring those ends up field that's what you have to do on third down situation a good change up call right there by Derek Gary Tranquil the Spartans need a quick score in this situation and a successful two-point conversion Slot formation. It's slotted over to the left. They'll run Urban the freshman again. And he is cut off by Bowens with a beautiful tackle. Second and ten. Good defensive line play that pushed the play to the sideline so those guys in blue and gold could pursue inside out and make the play. Schultz checks the sideline for the Spartans. Brings the play now back to the huddle. Goldburn is the running back. And Irvin, the freshman, is out wide to the right, being used as a wide receiver to the short side. Long is the motion man. Schultz gets his time, middle, and he's got 
out his wide receiver, Mason, again at the 26-yard line. See, that kind of motion, you change the strength of the formation from one side to the other. You loosen up the defense a little bit. They tried to throw that delay underneath. They got it completed, but good converging techniques by the defense. They don't allow them to make that first down. Here's Mr. Steele getting after him again. They're not going to let him up. <laughs> that might be a little bit late. Knockdown's a key thing for the Wolverine defenders against Schultz today. Two to make the first down. Schultz, and it is picked up. Fires incomplete, overthrew. And number 41, Tommy Hendricks, the talented freshman nickel man, picked up the coverage on the slot man and did the job just as the coaches have been raving about this freshman. That tight bump and run coverage is really tough on wide receivers, especially in college ball, because you don't see it week in and week out. But that type of coverage right there throws the rhythm off between the quarterback and the receiver. It was a good call, good change up by Michigan defensive people. Hard to throw an accurate. Barring a collapse by the Wolverines, this is a huge fourth down for the Spartans. Fourth and four. They need to get inside the 22-yard line. Schultz fires. Got it. Mason, first down, 15-yard line. Boy, he throws that slant pattern real well. Just takes that three-step rock, plants it. The, the defender was playing him outside. They came underneath like that, hit him right on the money. Here it is. He comes up, sticks him in like that. See that little stick right there? That gave him the freezing move and a chance to get back to the inside up there for the first down. Well done. Good, good receiver coaching. The other thing that I saw is that Woodson had some difficulty with the footing on that turf. We've watched him repair it here today, and he gave way, although he was already trailing against that move. First down, Spartan. Goldberg, left side, comes free. Goldberg, penalty flag, comes late at the 12-yard line. It's a flag down. This time, the face mask is picked up. You know, they're taking the running backs, Cedric Urban, and flankering them out, Brent, as a wide receiver, and that's putting him in a one-on-one -on -one situation with face a defensive mask. back. Defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. Second down. And he's backed off there like that. I, I get him the football. There's Irving's a fine receiver. Came into the ball game with 29 receptions. But a second and one with the ball at the seven yard line. Irvin, the lone running back. Strong to the left side, but they bring Carter back to the formation to the right. Irvin, first down, still going. Just short of the five yard line. Every once in a while, defensively, you jump your punts around. Sometimes you move it correctly. Sometimes you move it incorrectly. That time, they moved it away from the point of attack. Fortunately, there was some penetration that didn't work, but there, there was a hole there. Rick Saban and his staff, they need to divide this quarter into threes. Each five minutes, they're going to need to ring one up, which means they're going to need some stops. And this time, the coaches, if they look at the chart that Dick Vermeil keeps, they should be thinking two already if they score on this one. Trailer by 18 now. They bring it up to the line of scrimmage. It's first down and goal. Urban now points out. Draw Urban to the four-yard line. It'll be second down and goal for the Spartans. A good call to get the ball back there deep to a, a, a back as elusive as he is. He can bounce around. He can find that end zone real well. You know, he's already scored 13 touchdowns. Here's Gould number four. No, that's Reese 41 right there getting up in there, doing a pretty good job. And there's so many other blue jerseys that are mad at the ball carrier. 11.47 remaining, and Schultz with the Spartans up at the line, and a second and goal. Mason to the right, Carter to the left, turns the tight end, Schultz looks left, Carter's got it, out of bounds, no catch. And the marshmallows come flying into that corner. I hope Jack Arut was not arrested down there now. I know it. Huh? I'll tell you, he was hot. He I mean, was he, hot. He's our wheelman to the airport. <laughs> I know. No, we can't have him getting in trouble, yeah. Coach. Yeah, I know. But he just threw this ball a little bit late. <laughs> That's why I won't put up bail, Jack. <laughs> oh, hey, speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Maybe, Maybe got, they, yeah. yeah. He's got a fallback job now with home improvement. <laughs> so it, it didn't sound like they liked him. Maybe though. he wants to leave us, huh? Third down and goal. Long timeout. They use up a timeout, and when you're in a catch-up mode, that's costly. We'll take a break. We are back right now. It is third and goal for the Spartans. Two to make a touchdown and then go for the two-point conversion. Carter, number 81, steps in motion to the right side of the formation. They now go to split backs. Urban's off to the left, and now he comes in motion. Schultz rolls in that direction. Schultz fires. Got an open man. Touchdown, Carter! And the Spartans now must be thinking of the two-point play to use in this situation. Well, I, wait a minute. Hold on. I think I see Gardner. They're going to wait until the next one. I, I don't agree with it, but you know what has changed the two-point rule, and especially you look at the computer form, is the, the overtime principle. You know, it changes your thinking just a little bit of when you do it. I think they ought to go for it. So here's Gardner. Every point important as the Spartans continue. He pulled it to the left. Missed it to the left. Oh, baby, what a miss. Watch this catch by Carter. But the extra point is missed. Bullwinkle, we passed by here an hour ago. We're here. I Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Econo Lodge and Burger King, where you could get your burgers worth. 35-23. And the Wags were still buzzing about why Michigan State didn't go for the two. This is Butterfield on the return for the Wolverines. Has an alley right side. 30, 35 foot race. Look out. Butterfield explodes across midfield to the 40-yard line. Tyrone Butterfield. Well, I tell you, when you get the ball in there, that didn't hang up there quite long enough. You got a few key blocks there to the left side of your screen. See, and good move, movement right there. Flashes between people. White jerseys not coming to bounce. Attacking blockers properly. He flushes to the outside. The punter has to uh, kick off and has to push him out of bounds. Now Dreisbach brings the Wolverine offense up to the line of scrimmage. 11-18 to kill after a 15-play touchdown drive for the Spartans. The extra point is wide left. Williams. Williams to the 31. Dick, the question I have, and you were the first person I ever saw. See this chart right here, folks, that Dick has? It tells coaches what to do in that situation. What did it say Michigan State should have done? It said go for two. That's exactly what it said. And I think maybe they're thinking that, you know, if they go for two and make it, then they're down by, by 11, and they score and go for two and make it then, and a field goal ties the football game up, as you can see right here. Go for two at 2, 5, 9, and a minus 12 right there, or even 16 go for two. Thinking different than the card thing. It's his prerogative. You bet. He'll go for two next time. Williams had a beautiful defensive play by Chris Smith. Yes, and he's a fine football player. He's a, he's a empty the bucket on every snap type guy. When you study on film, and you watch him on the practice field. He doesn't know what a slow step is all about. He's a senior, one of the two seniors starting on that defense. This is a very young football team over there. Critical defensive play right here. They've got to come up with pressure, pressure, pressure. Michigan, meanwhile, will try to answer with four yards. He can get inside the 30-yard line. Drives back to throw for it. And he clears yeah. the running back. He's got it easy. Howard on that left side. Howard to the 15. First down, Wolverine. See, Brent, when you have two wide receivers outside the tight end to the field, and they go downfield and push the defense back as we swing that the fourth receiver to the wide side of the field. You'll see Howard number eight swing to your right. Now there's already four now that's he's the fourth receiver. Tough to pick him up. You have to get from the inside out to get there. It's a very good call and an excellent design in that situation. Nine minutes and 40 seconds remain in Ann Arbor. Dick Vermeil and Jack Arood, I'm Brett Musburger. The Wolverines once trailed in this game, 10-7. Now they lead it 35-23, and they're on the drive again. Howard stopped for a 
yard loss as Hill comes in. Penalty flag thrown by the umpire. You know, Lloyd Carr told us in our meeting yesterday the number one, one of the number one things they had to do was when they got in scoring territory, score, because they hadn't been doing that well. Oops, Illegal penalty. block, huh? So far today, it's three for three inside the red zone. Well, that's what's coming up next, and uh, certainly many of you in the Midwest will be watching Northwestern at Penn State. Northwestern has won 13 in a row in the Big Ten, but Joe Paterno at Beaver Stadium in November, since he's been coach. The back clock, below the weight on the offense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Replay, first down. We you think that thought about Joe Paterno, Beaver Stadium in November? 50 and 8 is his record. It is tough when you go to Happy Valley this time of year, but Northwestern riding an incredible wave that has watched them come from behind for four straight weeks. 920, Michigan taking its time, drives back, watching that clock. He'll bring it down to one or two seconds on that 25 second clock almost every time before he snaps it. Michigan State needs the football. First and 25. Timeout for the Wolverines and Drysbach. We're checking on the time situation with the coaches. And if time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge standing by in our studios. 9-11 to go. First and 25 for the Wolverines. Lloyd Carr and his staff with a comfortable 35-23 lead. Shaw comes toward the offensive line. On the blitz, Dreisbach is hit. It's an incomplete pass. Ball was thrown forward, and we throw it forward to John Saunders. John? Elsewhere in the Big Ten, Illinois and Iowa, Scott Weaver drops back, runs out of the pocket, and then tosses an interception to Vernon Rawlins, who takes it 20 yards for the touchdown, as Iowa now leads by 10. Brent? John, thank you, and uh, here, Dick, that was almost a disaster. I know, and I don't understand why you run a high-risk play when you're in control of the football game, 35 to 23. I, I, thought, I think that's using poor judgment. Second down at 25 for the Wolverines. Williams over the slot. Howard, the running back. In the round, Williams coming in behind Dreisbach, who's the lead blocker. Quarterback out in front. Ike Maurice goes for the legs, and he steps out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Well, the one thing that play does is eat up a lot of time. It takes time to execute that one, get it going. Ike Reese down a little bit. Boy, he's played hard all day. Williams out there. Coming in motion. Here goes the reverse. He got a good block out there. You see the knockdown right there. Quarterback getting involved in a block as well. There he is. He's got out there blocking. Reese may have knocked the wind out of himself as he made that diving attempt with Williams coming over to the Wolverine sideline. Clock down to nine. Spartans need the ball back in a hurry. Third down and 18. Remember, the Wolverines had a first down at the 11-yard line. They need to reach the Spartan 5 for a fresh set of downs. But down here, with the weather having settled, they are well within range for Remy Hamilton, except that Hamilton struggles here at Ann Arbor as a kicker, as do many, because of the wind and the sod. Third down for Dreisbach. Blitz. Blitz. They right into it. Ran right to it. Had the right defense. They blitzed the run. It was successful. And the Wolverines lose two more yards. And Remy Hamilton will be coming onto the field. You'll see the defense, the white jerseys appearing. There comes a safety right up in there to try to right there. And with that one back, there's no one that lead through and pick up that safety as he attacks. Sorry, Mr. Canoe. Sorry, Canoe. Now Greasy will put the ball down at the 34-yard line. This will be a 44-yard attempt for Remy Hamilton. Made it this distance before. He's two for four this year, but only 500 here in Ann Arbor. Oh, that was a beautiful. Got it. Remy Hamilton puts three more on the board. now. 
My name is John Anderson, born in 1914. In case you just joined us, Dick, there was a stunning turnover sequence there in the final seconds of the first half. That was a ball game. Here. Oh, my, it's the difference. And it, I've only seen one college game since I've been broadcasting go like that, and that was Penn State uh, years ago against Boston College, and Boston College did it to Penn State. There is that short, high kickoff by Feely, fielded at the 12-yard line, and they put uh, Irvin over there, it looks like. That's who that was. That was Justin Irvin at the 25. Well... These are the sights and sounds of a big Michigan afternoon in the big house. by 15. Schultz off a play fake. Throws complete on first down. That's Mason at the 35-yard line. Todd Schultz has really been impressive. When some of these throws, he has to throw right to the exact spot to get the completion. No room for the receiver to adjust to the ball. It just has to be right there. He is sticking it right in. Through two costly interceptions, but both in the first half. Mason with eight catches for 93 yards here this afternoon. Second down, toss play. Irvin, the freshman, comes off his block, and he's short of the first down. William Carr has just picked up the tempo here, coming down the stretch. He's starting to wear down some of those offensive linemen. Yes, you know, he's a battler. He plays every snap extremely hard. Now, what was it the defensive line coach was just telling us, uh, Greg Madison, at one time, he chewed him out at the end of a ball game, said he didn't give him 100%. He looked at the tapes and said, gosh, he gave me 110%. I was wrong. Spartans trail it by 15. Need a quick score. This time, no doubt about it. They'll line up and go for the two. Complete and incomplete. Ball is dropped. Should have been caught at the 40-yard line. Mason did not hang on. Now, that was Octavius Long. Let me check that. That was not 80. That was 20. So here's the Big Ten. The Buckeyes roll again. Iowa on a comeback. Wisconsin winless in the conference. Later on ABC, Northwestern at Penn State. So here's the fourth down. And here's Goldberg. Get it. He launched at the end. The spot will determine. He lunged right at the end. David Bowens and Woodrow Hankins hanging on. And he got it only because of the second effort. He was cut off. Josh Williams, a big defensive tackle, did a good job. He, he slanted right. Number 91 right there. So watch him slant right out into it. And then Bowens, number six, working up field, taking on the blockers like that, forces it back. Two good defensive people with fulfilling their responsibilities. On first down. race first career interception second of the day second of the might day. be the first or second half that's, that's right came in and here came into the game with zero having a big game real stupid as i said in studying game tapes sitting back there doing what he's supposed to do and schultz was under pressure when he threw this ball he sets up he knows he's got a here hurry here comes Steele, and wham right there mr bowens comes in and gives him a shot number six Three interceptions. And Ray over there with the coaching staff turns in a huge afternoon for the Wolverines. Williams and the Wolverines go to work on the clock. Six and a half minutes. Lead it by 15. They'll milk the 25 down to a couple of seconds and then take the snap. An impressive triumph here by the Wolverines. They fell behind early. And then two turnovers in the closing 20 seconds of the first half, and Lloyd Carr's team was in business. Lloyd Carr starting to breathe just a little bit better right now. I sensed yesterday that he was a little bit uptight, a little bit concerned about this football game. Second down and seven. Howard to the middle. Third 
down, perhaps four yards to go. Clock inside of six minutes. And the Michigan State winning streak comes to an end here in Ann Arbor. And again, we'll go back to that statistic at the top of the day. The last seven times that Michigan has lost to Michigan State, and last year was one of them. They have always come well, back and won. This will make it eight straight times that they have answered a defeat at the hands of their arch rival by a victory the following season. You can't beat an inferior team by turning the ball over four times and being minus four. You just, there's just no way. You go back to that great Spartan team in the mid 60s before you can find back to back. Sorry, Canoe came over. Good safety play. That ball was flown high in the air, flown high in the air. It hung up there, and that gave that safety time to close. Mr. Six, Mr. Canoe, see, reading the quarterback, see the jump he got on, and he pumped in that same direction he wanted to throw because he used a little out move right there. Actually, hit him right for the face mask. It wasn't defended, it hit him right in the face mask. See that right the helmet. Ryan Greasy to pooch punt again. Dropped one down at the five-yard line here early in this game. They have caught the breeze this time. Coming out on the 20. Well, this is tomorrow at 2 Eastern time on the network. The Thrifty Car Rental Skate America International. Again, one right here in the central time zone. And then Merrill Lynch shootout. And that's from Bermuda, and that is for Eastern Time. Five thirteen left. Screen to Irvin. Out at the twenty-five yard line. So in the first five minutes of the fourth quarter, the Spartans did some business. But in the second five, Michigan kicked a field goal and held the Spartans at bay. Now, in the final five minutes, Michigan State finds itself behind by 15 points. And against this defense, that's a mighty big mountain to attempt to climb. Bigger. Yeah, and a real good pressure by true freshman Tommy Hendricks that came in there off. He was lined up out on the slot and then came off there, and the coverage moved over. And when he moved up in there to rush, the coverage came over and compensated for the area that he left, and he deflected the football. There he comes. Left side of your screen. There he is. He was knocked down. He got up, and there he got his right hand on the ball. Real good effort by young Tommy Hendricks. Watching Michigan here today makes you even more impressed with Northwestern, whom you will watch later against Penn State. Six. The deep ball is overthrown. Fourth down coming up. Well, they went ahead and tried to take advantage of that one-on-one -on -one situation. That's the running back out there like that. No help. Good throw it actually. Good coverage too that time by Hankins. Tough afternoon for Saban and his staff. Starting to be a relaxing one for Carr and his. Big one still ahead for Ohio State, and that's when the Wolverines come to Columbus. This time they come marching in without the Akabatuka. And the guys and their fans better not be overconfident because there are still weapons galore on this Michigan team. Schultz middle, another interception picked off by Copenhaver. Copenhaver is out of bounds at the 20 yard line. There's the penalty flag thrown at the trombone player. Trombone player got out of line over there and obviously took his horn to the interceptor. You got to be careful of that band. You know, we've warned you guys over there. <laughs> Losing his concentration right now. Time to throw the ball initially. He sets up. Now the steel comes in there and he throws it. There are no white jerseys there. Absolutely none. Losing his poise. Losing his concentration. Showing that he's only played and is a, as a starter seven football games. Interceptions and one fumble. Oh. <laughs> and riding over there for the band. 
much. Here he goes. Now look at see, see the trombone player gleefully coming by. Oh, no question. <laughs> oh, you gotta love Dead the fans in the Big Ten. Personal foul for tackling out of bounds. Half the distance to the goal. First down. With a horn in your hand. <laughs> you can't do it with a horn in your hand. <laughs> They must have called that on Cedric Irvin, who uh, threw him out there at late. Four twenty-six remaining. Shaw dashes in motion behind Dry's box. Oh, <laughs> they didn't need the trombone player that time. No, they did. Lamar Marshall was blitzing off the corner. Number 29. He had been a starter, and then they replaced him today with Marvin Wright, showing that he's uh, a little bit concerned. He comes flying into the right side of your screen. He'll flash in there, get blue in there, and the blocker could not get there quick enough to stop him from getting to the ball carrier. Well, the Wolverines should enjoy their post game pizza down at the Cottage Inn. We get ours. They can take their <laughs> vouchers in there. And uh, Lorenzo Vieira Patron will take good care of the fellas down there. No wonder they're so big, these offensive linemen. Well, I think that's why Arut was so fired up. Those carbohydrates from those pizza last night. He's still you know, pumping a little energy now. 38-23. Howard's free. Touchdown, Michigan. That's his second of the day. Michigan stays in the thick of things as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned. There are also Fiesta Bowl scouts here today. They must be impressed. Likewise, the Comp USA Citrus Bowl is here. Michigan is headed for a big bowl game this season. But the one they want is the granddaddy. And they are serving warning to Ohio State that the Wolverines are coming to Columbus. Tra-la, tra-la. 45-23, Wolverine. On 10 today, Arizona State hoping to reach Pasadena unbeaten. They should be able to handle Oregon State on the road. Of course, those are all later today. There's that pooch kick. It's been successful. 21-yard line. They keep it out of Mason's hands. And from the 35, the Spartans will put it in play. And the headlines tomorrow might as well read, four turnovers doom Spartans. Four interceptions, one fumble. Let's see. That adds up to five, right? Yeah. And right. <laughs> so, you know, it's, they never taught me any math. Well, yeah. but five turnovers doom the Spartans. There's your Rose Bowl scenario for Michigan. Win out at Purdue. They'll be heavily favored there. Good game coming up with Penn State. And then the monster at Ohio State. And along the way, Northwestern needs to lose to help the Wolverine. Schultz. Urban. 40-yard line. Copenhaver, there defensively, 315. All right, Dick, we have seen Florida State's defense. We have seen Nebraska's defense. We have seen Ohio State's defense. We have watched Michigan's defense. Give me a, an analysis as to how good this Wolverine defense is. Well, it's a little different style. Florida State's and Nebraska's defense have better outside pass rushers. I mean, they have more than one Bowen. They have two on, you know, and they have a, a third backup guy that can come in and rush. I think uh, maybe a little bit overall more team speed in Nebraska and Florida State on defense. But this is a very solid defense. And I, I think through four quarters at the end of a football game, you play this defense. If your offense doesn't turn it over, the opponent isn't going to score many football points. That's all there is to it. They're, they're as good as those other people. Shotgun here, the closing minutes of this ball game. Schultz goes deep, got a man down there, and it's Mason reaches for the pylon out at the one yard line. First and goal, Michigan State. And he went by the number one defender, Mr. Woodson. 
a little relaxed, maybe lose your concentration a little bit, not thinking technique. Shotgun has plenty of time. They pick up the stunts inside. He throws it high. What a nice arm this young man has. Much stronger arm than I had anticipated. Saw him last year. Remember when he beat Boston College in his first start. 45 yards for Mason, who has scored, gives him a good day. 10 catches, 151 yards, and that score. a surprise because the fullbacks in their offense don't carry the ball very much. They carried it 13 times between the two of them coming in here. That's a little change when you give it to them down. You know, in my coaching experience, I've always felt this way. If I threw one more interception than my opponent did, so I was minus one interception, I was going to lose three or four times. It's just really, really Cedric Irvin was all alone. Got his hands up and said, listen, it was, there was nobody covering me. I'm on the flat. Just throw me the ball. Pick the easy one. He threw the more difficult throw incomplete. Well, we've got a moment. Let's check in with our man in New York, John Sunder. John? Brent, Missouri is giving Colorado fits today. Corby Jones, 13 yards on this run, puts the Tigers back on top. 10-7. Colorado struggling right now. We'll keep you up to date on this one. We want to remind everyone that coming up next, some of you will see Northwestern Penn State, Washington against USC, Maryland and Clemson, or Baylor and Texas. Check your local listings for the game available in your area and on pay-per-view. Brent. John, that reminds me seeing Northwestern. I'll pass along my congratulations to Amy Heineman and Bruce Albert. They're going to be married tonight in New York. The St. Regis Hotel, they've scheduled the wedding after Keith Jackson is off the air. Bruce Albert is one of the biggest Northwestern Wildcat fans in the country. So congratulations. I hope both the Wildcats and the wedding goes well. I watched now let's set the onside kick. I watched some practices on the field. He'll get a real good bounce right there. Oh, it didn't get the bounce. Out of bounds. Didn't get the bounce. On the practice field, it hit went really up in the air, and they were able to get it. Of course, they're working against themselves. Well, the coordinating producer of ABC's college football is Bob Goodrich, associate coordinating producer, and the man who produced today's game, home game for him. Welcome back to Jim Wrestler. Directed by steady Norm Samet. College football today produced by Charles Coplin. Directed by Calvin Haywood. Technical director of New York, Gary Boyarski. The New York remote coordinator, Bruce Clark. Technical director is Doug Schmidt. Associate director here, Margaret Schaefer. Margaret, as usual, good job. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Receiving team has elected the result of the play. First down. Our production manager, Beth Giuliani. Doing her outstanding work. Technical operation manager here, Roger Williams. Assistant, assistant producer, Laura Heineman and Brian Mankey. Statistician. George Hill staying up with the numbers and our spotter Brian Bobelson also a home game for him Michigan man is Howard I noticed he gave us more numbers on the Michigan guys in Michigan State today computer <laughs> statistics Anthony Holman down there on the sidelines the land shark man himself Dick Shafter from East Lansing students won't be happy back there but at least I guess they get Michigan there next year don't they isn't that the way this goes that's the way it goes yep. The 43 and the big house is quiet. A lot noisier about an hour and a half ago. In 17 seconds, two turnovers late in the first half. That's Bill Newman. Has run well. I would guess he's up, George, around 100 yards. There has not been a 100 yard rusher against Michigan State this year and our Chevrolet players of this game Derek Mason had a fine game for Michigan State Scott Dreisbach got those four touchdown passes in the first half 24 carries for a hundred yards for Chris Howard he is the first running back this year to rush for a hundred yards against this Michigan State defense you know and he had 127 yards last week in 12 carries against Minnesota so he has two fine games back to back as soon as we finish, 
Off we go. Northwestern Penn State, Washington SC, Maryland Clemson, Baylor against Texas. Williams working on that clock. Jimmy Bond, Texas. Howard's play that he went for 100 yards on was a counter play to the left. It's the first time they've run the play to the left all day. Now they just try it two times in a row and it doesn't work. But uh, I've been waiting for him to run it back in the other direction. There's the situation in the Big Ten. Buckeyes roll over Minnesota. Another sluggish start. Better not start slowly against the Wolverines. Looking for its first win of the Big Ten. Wisconsin on the comeback this week. So Michigan State will have two losses in the Big Ten now at Iowa and here at Michigan. Nick Saban told me that in Iowa when they lost Iowa that loss helped their football team mature because they came back and they started preparing with better concentration and working with better work habits and he said we grew from there. Michigan State drops to 4 2 still battling to get a bull spot but Michigan in that drive and trying to get to Pasadena. They'll need help and they'll need a win in Columbus. That won't be easy. Wolverines will be an underdog when they go down to play Ohio State. Two minutes. Drives back. The difference in this game, turnovers. Michigan very efficient. And holding on to the ball. Getting outside like that is, is a good decision because right now Michigan is playing five down linemen. They took a linebacker and put him down in a three-point stance in front of the tight end. Not many cracks to run inside. You might as well go outside. Yep. Eat up the clock as well. Minute and a half. Pack up the shoulder pads, coach. This yep. puppy's over. Yep, it's over. And Michigan State will rebound. They have, they've, I mean, you learn a lot as you grow. It's a young football team. They've turned the ball over. You're gonna, they, they know they're going to lose. Coaches tell them that all the time. But uh, this is a vivid example of what the coaches are talking about. Williams. He's getting close to 100, too. I think he is, but he had 81 a little while ago. That'd be something at two backs. Hit the Sparks defense with 100 yards. Williams is at 97, coach. Mm -hmm. so Madison and Lloyd with an embrace. Big relief. Quarterback coach there, Stan Paris, has just joined the staff this year. Out of Rutgers, has made a nice contribution to Dreisbach. He's playing well. There's another coach right there that's uh, Eric Campbell. They're all, hey, on the sideline, when you win one like this against a good football team, it's rewarding. Hope our buddy Keith Jackson likes that press box over his face. <laughs> Have any trouble with that announce booth? <laughs> Just kidding, Keith. Final 30 seconds. They get drive back. Boy, I'll tell you, he has two years left to play. He's an All-American just waiting to happen. That's all there is to it. Yeah, when you're losing like this, it gets a whole lot colder. Remember our coach Saban. There'll be better days ahead for Michigan State. But this one belonged to Carr and the Wolverines. The Spartans turn it over five times here this afternoon and get shelled by Michigan 45-29. For the Wolverines...